of the nation.
Los Angeles. This is Los Angeles. Breaking, breaking news. Gang, gang, gang capital of the nation. This, this is Los Angeles. Breaking, breaking, breaking news. This is Los Angeles. Breaking, breaking news. This, this is Los Angeles. Breaking, breaking, breaking news. Gang, gang, gang capital of the nation. This, this. And uh, welcome back, everyone. We're going to go ahead and jump into it. Do we have technical difficulty, Alex? Now I got to do my act all over again. Hold on. 
Well, welcome back, everyone, to News or Norbies. And before I introduce my co-host, ah, this guy fucked me up, man. He showed up an hour early just to have technical difficulties. But anyways, uh, if you guys haven't gotten a chance to check out my Gold Toes interview, definitely check out my Gold Toes interview. Uh, we did that eight days ago. And then we had uh, Rhodium After Dark. It's a new series where we invite guests to come in around 10 o'clock, maybe Friday or Saturday, grab a little drink, and we just shoot the shit. That's pretty much what we do. Okay. Uh, but, and then again, I had a very special guest, uh, East Coast legend by the name of Billy Biohazard. Had a great, great story. We talked jujitsu, Wing Chun, punk, metal, Brooklyn, crack, send dog, in a nutshell. Okay. Uh, and he brought in his spicy tequila. I always say the spice is nice. I didn't have the bottle here, but uh, it was actually made with ghost pepper. You taste it, it te pica. You know, one of the greatest Mexican lies is no pica, pero si pica. Then tonight we have news with Norbies and we got a bunch of shit we want to cover. Here's where we give you the ghetto news from an unprofessional perspective. So other than that, we're going to go ahead and jump right into it with the one and only... Using Norbies. Hey, Tony. Hey, you know what? People are going to think that you got the memo because they think we're probably wearing the same hat. Yeah, you know what? And I was going to say earlier, I think, uh, are you familiar with the guy Spanto? Spanto? Spanto. I think that was his name, Spanto. I don't He remember. did that uh, Raise, uh, what was it, Born and Raise? It was Born and Raise. You know what? It was a clothing brand. Maybe, bro, be so. because there was a guy named Spanto, I, I believe. I'm yes, not sure. Yes. He's the one that gave me that doll with the girl right there. If that's him, well, he he's the design. He designs clothing. Okay, well, uh, with an, uh, the, some guy named Shoot or something. But uh, I point. think he was having an event. Okay, either today or yesterday uh -huh. on behalf of Spanto. I, I don't know if it's been a year since he died. Mm. But uh, okay, it's not that guy. Rest in peace to that to him. But it's not that guy. Okay, so you know what I'm talking about now. Yeah, I know. You're okay, okay, about yeah, yeah, yeah. And then it just reminded me of his uh, the way they write their letters on their. Close. Oh, okay. Well, like, this know, is mine. And, you and know what? And Norbert's. I heard his story also recently. Why well, like, it sound so sad, bro? Because it was kind of sad when okay, I heard okay. it. it was, My apologies. It, it was, and I hope that guy one day comes here to actually speak on that because it's very interesting. It was his partner for the company. Okay. Uh, that uh, born and raised company. Okay. I was like, I'll, I'll shoot it to you later. All right, so cool. Because I, I don't want to start off slow like, like that, bro. Because I, like, I always tell Norbert, we got to bring some <laughs> entertainment to our fans. Because when we start on a bad note, Norbert, <laughs> you bring people high down, bro. Well, no, it was a, it was a great story of uh, how kids, kids like the way you were, the way you brought up, you right. were brought up. They were brought up the same way. They grew up in Venice. You know, they grew up in the gang world. They grew up in the graffiti world. Right. They're just, you know, and they made it. You All know, good. Unfortunately, you know, one passed away of cancer, but uh, yes, rest in peace to him. Definitely. Norbert, I'm going to change the subject because I'm not going to start it on a bad <laughs> note, bro. You know, when I say a bad note on a sad note, let me rephrase that. Stella Rosa, I saw this today at Food for Less. That's where I shop. I shop in my neighborhood, Food for Less. A lot of people don't know hey. that Food for Less, uh, Ralph's delivers to Food for Less, and they both, Ralph's and Food for Less are owned by Kroger. Yes. Okay. But this is the Tropical Passion Brandy. Yeah, I was like, what the fuck? Watch, open it. Look how nice the bottle looks, bro. We're going to crack it open later. After, but first, we got to we gotta get the news first. You know, it's a, I think a, Kroger is originally from L.A., right? I'm not sure, bro. Damn. Look how nice that looks, huh? I don't know if you should show it off, though, Tony. They're not sponsoring us like that. I don't I don't care. Maybe they will. Hey, hey, Alice, go ahead and put them a uh, solo camera. Show it. Go ahead. Show them the box, too. Show them the box, too. Model it. You may get a sponsor. You never know. You got to look. Okay, we're still waiting for that solo camera. It's lagging. It's lagging. There he is. Turn the box around so they can see it. Let's give that 360 look. Okay. That 360 look. Look at that. Stella Rolls Up Brandy. Okay. Now turn the box around for the fourth time. It's a good caramel color. Okay, that's what the box looks like. Now they have peach as well and they have berry. You know, the sweetie, the berry, the black of the girl, or how does that go? The 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 black of the berry, the black, the sweeter the juice. I don't know. The, the, black no, the sweeter of the, the juice, the black of the girl. The black of the bird. No, whatever. It tastes. Oh, just leave it out. Leave it right here. Black bro. tastes good. God. Nobody's starting off on the wrong foot. Okay. <laughs> All right. Hey, before we start, I did want to shout out a uh, show that I, I was I listened to uh, this past Friday. Uh huh. It was, it's a. They're, they're from. I think they're from the IE from uh, Paris. Okay. Uh, the show is called Shining the Light, Riding Low Show. 
Uh-huh. Uh, it's on a, a website called LA Par- Radio dot com. Uh, it was it was cool because you know they were they they speak about like subjects such as autism. Okay. You know they're they're all it's a it's a station of raza. Okay. And uh, they just bring up like very positive points. Okay. And you know you you don't really get them to hear it too much, especially in our community. Like we don't really talk about autism that much. There's a lot of things we don't talk about, Norbert, because yeah. there's a lot of people out there that are just feeding people cheese, man. Yeah. And we try try to uh, stray away from all that. Definitely. But uh, anyways, other than that, how's your week been going, man? I know it's uh, Sunday. Tell us, tell us, go back to last Sunday. How was your week been? <laughs> it's been pre- it's been pretty productive, Tony. I've, I've uh, uh, as you know, I I have a sh- I made a me and the hip hop jet made a channel called Run the Fade, and I, I gotta say thank you to a lot of the people that have been supporting yeah. its growth. I think we're like at I want to say nine hundred um, uh, subscribers, almost at, at a thousand, huh? Yeah, we're almost at a thousand. I just want to say thank you to everybody that's you know been supporting us, leaving yeah. comments, feedback. It's 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 interesting, Tony, because you know. I've never been used to being be in front of the camera, even mm-hmm. doing this show. Like I always preferred being in the background. Well, when I met you, you were in the background. Remember, yeah. you, you were you yeah. were running that show with uh, Sammy Joe. Yes, yes. And I was a guest, and that's when I first met you. And then yeah. after that, you you came over. I think believe I believe twice. Yes, yes. yeah. And well, then actually it, once. I, I only came once with for the e, dining with the wizard. Oh, okay. Yeah. You, you know, a lot of people ask me. Uh, you know, from time to time, um, uh, how did how did Norbert happen? Like, you know, as far as <laughs> being on the show. Yeah. Okay. Well, let me tell you how it happened. I already mentioned it, that when I went uh, to Sammy Joe's uh, interview, which was, by the way, great and is still up. Yes. Uh, I met Norbert and then uh, yeah. I guess you came with her for the Dining with the Wizard, right? Yes. Yes. Okay. Then after that, he like hit me up maybe, I don't know, a couple of weeks later. Uh, and he was actually running the show for a while. Yeah. yeah Norbert was. was running the show. Here. I was. And then after a while, one of my guests canceled. Well, he rescheduled, and I just told Norbert, take calls with me. Mm, yeah, 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 yeah. And yeah, then yeah. after that, it was just like the rest is history. I thought, yeah. okay, we have pretty good chemistry, and that's how we did it. So, you know, it's not like he tried out and like he tap danced or something. And <laughs> I said, that's it, Norbert, you got it. It became organic. It became it organic. organic. And, and it's, it's interesting. And I'm glad you brought back that 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 episode where you came through uh, Sammy Joe's podcast because that was – you know, it's interesting. I've always loved rap since I was a kid. It was, it, that's what we listen. Everyone wakes up, listens to Power 106. Yeah. Or 923, the beat. Yeah. And we always listen to rap. Right. The one thing that we, like, growing up, you don't really see colors, especially when right. it comes to rap. You just right. see, you know, it, okay, it's mainly black people on there. Right. But and then you see all these uh, groups that are rasa that come out. Right. And then you never really look at the like the background. You just see the faces that that are on camera, but you never really see the background. And when you came to Sammy Joe's, I, I like to do research on the people that come through. Like let's yeah. see who they really are. And then when I looked at your background, and then I saw the documentary, yeah, I was like, "Fuck!" Like it, it's not because I always like history. It's right. my favorite topic, history. Always knowing what happened. And when you see everything that you have done in music, right? I mean, it's a trip how so many people don't know or don't or never done the research to see exactly your background. Oh, they don't care to. And, and it's that's, okay. And that's the messed up part. And you know, that's the one thing though. Everybody sees the faces. Nobody sees who works on the actual music. Right. Like, right. you know, you know, Norbert. My upbringing, as far as when it comes to rap is this, that uh, I went through a phase that most Chicanos will never go through. Yeah. And this is what I mean. Yeah. Okay. When I was in the industry, there wasn't, I'm talking about LA specifically. Yes. There wasn't too many Rasa rappers. I no. can name them all. Yeah. Probably w- with these fingers, I can yeah. name them all. Okay. Yeah. And of course, uh, like I said, I was a fan of Frost uh, uh, from since, uh, the 80s. Yeah. He had a song called Rough Cuts, Terminator, 1990, Job La Raza. So yeah. I know the history. Yeah. Okay. But I came from an era where I would be in a room full of black men. Yes. And I was the only oddball in there. And what made me oddball is that I was just a different color. Yeah. Not that they ever made me feel yeah. odd, you know, yeah. being in the studio with NWA, being in the studio quick, second to none, AMG. That was my upbringing. Yeah. People like to use that and say he never fucked with us, Raza. You know what? I've been fucking with proper dose since day one. Hey, 
Okay. Facts. Frank Reed, probably the hardest Latin rapper of all time. Or should I say the hardest Mexican rapper of all time? Yeah, definitely. Period. Definitely. Okay. Fuck, so, I miss this rapping. So that, that's, my th- you know, changed my mind. Spanish that's just the way flag? it is. Fast flag too, right? Yeah. You're you like know, the, uh, the secret member? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Frost uh, uh, recorded uh, uh, with uh, La Raza. I mean, with um, Frost, oh. with, um, I just said their damn name, with Proper Dose. Proper Dose, yes, yeah. yes, yes, you're right. Yeah, so he recorded with them. Uh, Spanish Fly was out since the late 80s. You know, uh, Soy 18 with the bullet, and I yeah. give a shout out to once again, uh, Essa Rich Rock, Essa yeah. Daz, and then DJ Tricks, and then the new members, which is Johnny, yeah. uh, Mokes, yeah. you know, et cetera. Yeah, shout out to them. Hell yeah, so, so, you know, but my upbringing, that's what that was. I would like, we try going to Philadelphia, selling out shows over there, going to Detroit, selling out shows yeah. over there, going to Louisiana, and you're the only, if you will, white guy in the whole place. But it's crazy, though, because I, you've worn, like, I think a shirt that had, like, the Mexican flag. I don't know if that, that was, if I'm mistaken, but mm-hmm. I know you'd been representing yeah. on tour. On tour and a video shoot. showing people that you're Mexican. Yeah. You know, it's crazy, though, because, like I said, most people, they don't want to do the research. I mean, if I didn't know you, I would have known that, the guy that did some of the biggest hits for Tupac was, was a Mexican J. guy named Johnny J. Johnny J. You know, and, and it's and it's sad that people don't know his full story. Uh, he was full blooded Mexican. He but he was just adopted by yeah. a black man and a Mexican woman. So he took upon his stepfather's last name, Johnny Jackson. Yeah. So a lot of people even dogged him. Even Raza dogged him for yeah. saying, but he's not a really fully Mexican. Bro, like, is that his fault that he was adopted? Yeah. You know, it, it's just sad. But anyways, Norbert. Yeah, that's Thank crazy, you for though. doing your homework and, you know, recognizing. Yeah. Well, I mean, there's a lot of them. I mean, again, without me having known, known you, I would have known Tito the Hood Santa was also a producer. Tito the Hood Santa was also a producer that got ripped off by Snoop and his camp. And he had to sue them and got over $100,000. Hey. You know, because he did a lot of songs for Goldilocks. He did a lot of songs for the East Siders. And they just went ahead and used them without his consent. And I got to admit, I, honestly, when I was young, the only... Person that I thought that were that's what were DJs like Julio G. Yeah, Tony G. And I and I just thought they were DJs. I didn't think they were actually producers. No, great producers, great DJs, uh, uh, and they definitely, uh, you know, have a uh, how would you say, made an impact within that yeah. their era. Now the Baker Boys, they were DJ DJs, right? They oh. were DJs too, and no, and producers. Oh, I can't take away the Baker Boys. They came out of Bakersfield, so much love and respect to them. They've been here on this platform. And uh, they produce a big hit. Uh, yeah. Pistol Grip Pump on my lap at all time. Oh. For volume 10. That's their really? beat. Yes. Yeah. Well, you, you know go. who else they produce? A lot of people don't know. You ever heard that song by JV? Uh, I'm the neighborhood. I'm the neighborhood yeah, queen yeah, yeah, or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They produce that too. Oh, shit. Yeah. A lot of people don't know that they produce that shit. So there was a lot of rasa out there. But the thing is, it was scarce to find them. Yeah. You know, now we're not saying that there was no rasa. We're just yeah. saying that in the industry that yeah. was actually good. Yeah. You know, so anyways, let's go ahead and jump into it. We're going to go ahead and talk about Jerry Jones, the Dallas Cowboys. Hey. So Alice, if you want to go ahead and bring that up, let, let us know where it's up. Jerry Jones, that would be pick number two. Okay. Uh, we thought we had all that set up. I thought we had all that set up, bro. <laughs> We're just going to wait in silence. There we go. All right, uh, DJ Vlad, or should I say Vlad? I don't know if he, is he ever a DJ. I heard somebody one time call him DJ Vlad. Vlad the Impaler, or the, the uh, Russian guy. Uh, oh, okay, thank you. Vlad TV, the guy from Vlad TV, the vampire, the guy that people say that he incriminates people, or whatever. Oh, well, he released this. Okay. okay, Vlad TV, the culture vulture. I, I guess so, bro. Ah. There's, you know, whenever you don't like somebody, we all we just give them names now. Hey. Okay, so now. So Jerry Jones, let me read this to you. I think this is pretty hilarious, bro. Uh, let me Jerry Jones, to clarify, he was the... No, he, no, not was. He is the owner of the Dallas Cowboys, bro. Oh, okay. Okay. America's team, whether people like to hear so that or not. He got lucky and somebody bought it? No. Oh, okay. I'm going to tell you. Oh, okay. Right, right. okay. Judge rules Jerry Jones has to take paternity test to see if he his he's father of a 27-year-old woman. Oh, shit. Okay. Now, you know how old he is? Like 70? 81. Buh. Subtract 27. Damn. Hold on. Subtract 27. You know how old he was? 27? Um, Subtract 27 from 83? 81. 54. 54? Is that that bad? 
Oh. He was 54, Did getting some again? nalgas, hey. and he just happened to have a kid. Hey. I go, we could only be so lucky. Okay, but now I'm going to ask you this, okay? Let's look at it this way. Yeah. We don't know how, that, how long it's going, been going on. Yeah. But supposedly she just recently came out and said, I'm your daughter. Oh, shit. My thing is, why now? That's always the question that lingers in the back of everybody's head. Why now? Why do you come out now? Well, you know, some... So you got to realize, some... So, and I don't know if this was a situation, but some moms do not want to tell their children about their fathers. Good example, Kanye West always talked shit about his dad. Loved his mom for thick and thin. She, yeah. no, mom was number one. Fuck that. That can suck a dick. Right, right. Only to find out later in life. That his dad had always been writing letters to him, always been trying to get his attention, always trying to be part of his life. But his mom intentionally made sure he never wow. was inside Kanye's life. I didn't know that. And ever since he found that out, unfortunately, he, he did feel a lot more differently about his mom. But she, she robbed him of that opportunity. Having, the opportunity of having a father. And that's probably why Kanye is the way Kanye is right now, because okay. he never had a dad. Okay, I understand it, but this is not about a Kanye. We're talking about Jerry Jones. Oh, yeah, I don't know why okay. I was granted on that. Yeah, I don't know why either. <laughs> well, just to say, you know, this, this is just how some women are, some moms are. They don't want the child to have a relationship with the dad because is, they're mad at the dad. Is it possible? Let's just say, because we talked about this last time about older men dating younger yes. women, older women dating younger men. Yes. Maybe let's just say that he was 54 and she was in her 20s. Okay. And then maybe she was embarrassed to say, I got pregnant from the Dallas Cowboy owner. Oh, because she might look like a gold digger? Maybe. Maybe. I mean, you, you never know. Well, I mean, I'm pretty sure he was as wealthy as he was back then. Yeah, no, he, he is a now. billionaire now. But or yeah. he was married. Yeah. but Or maybe he was married. Yeah. You're right. Yeah. But my thing is, like, for an example, say you were the son of Jerry Jones. Would you want your mom to tell you? <sighs> yeah, I'd be rich. Okay. Okay. That's, but, so when you see him, you'll be like, Dad. Go Cowboys. <laughs> Let me get that. <laughs> Put me on, that, on, the, on the cards. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Let me get them access cards. So, so you would want to know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, all right. That's cool. Be okay, personal. wait, wait. You wouldn't want to know that your dad's a multi-millionaire? I wouldn't want to know for the money. I would want to know. Well, and I mean, not for, but that just happens. No, you just made it seem like it. that. You just made it. You <laughs> said, <laughs> yeah, yeah I want to be rich. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, that's a given. It's already part of it. You, you. But I'm asking you, would you want to know? I'd want to know who my dad is, Okay, yes. so yeah, you'd want to know. And they right. get the money. All right, you can take his ass down. Go Cowboys. Anyways, Norbert, go ahead and hit us with one. Hit us with your best shot. Well, nah, I'm not going to hit with the best shot. Just yet. Well, at least one. Okay, so, you know, I've, I've said this many, I've talked about this uh, quite a few times. And uh, I'm going towards a, a biblical study here. Oh, shit. We all know that in the Bible... The Old Testaments talk about an ancient war, right, between the angels and the dragons. Yeah, yeah. And most people in interpret dragons as being a uh, being a Lucifer or being the devil. But uh, what if it actually was referring to dragons? And okay. I say this because scientists recently unveiled a 240 million year old fossil that is a dead giveaway to a dragon. Maybe, is it a dinosaur that maybe that we haven't discovered yet? Well, here's the thing, Tony. We don't put these bones together. What, what, what is it? Why wouldn't we believe that they might just be dragons? Okay, they might just because, be. I'm not going to argue with that. You know why? Because in ancient ruins, we don't see pictures of dinosaurs. We see pictures. Of, we either see pictures or sculptures of dragons. And now, a lot of people like to think that the creation of humanity was... Was became from angels, well, not angel. I'm sorry. You know what? From these people called Anunnakis. I don't know if you right. ever heard of that. Yeah, I heard of. It. I don't know too much about it, but yes, I have heard of. It. Okay, so they're they're giving the they have been given the the what's it called? They're giving the the well, I don't know how you would put it, but pretty much people are claiming that they're the ones that started human civilization. Okay, I don't know if you're familiar with uh, this ancient purse. Handbag that everybody carries. Everybody carries a coach or Michael Kors today. <laughs> but you ever seen that this angel, this like Sumerian looking angel that would represent a knock it with a purse? No. 
And let me show you a picture of it. Okay, let's move on. <laughs> While you're looking, just tell us the story. Uh, well, because you're beginning to bore me. Well, I mean, most people don't want to believe that that's a dragon. They just like you. They want to say it's just a dinosaur. I like to say it's different because one, there's, there's one, not enough proof. Well, there's always been the proof. No, and 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 I'm going to show it to you. The proof is that angels do exist. They did see their own humans, but dragons did exist also, and they also created their own humans. Okay. Now the bit the the biggest proof that this really happened. It's because they left sign. They left uh, sculptures of it on the walls. Scriptures. Scripts? I don't know. But here, this is a, the proof. One came from, the, from this part of the world. And the other came from the other side of the world. Okay, and what is the other side of the world? Angels. Oh, so it, that, that looks like a, a bucket. It could be, they were probably painting. Well, they, that, the, on the right side. So is that why guys today wear purses? Well, no, that means that's a representation of, of seeding. Like they had the seeds in there. Okay. One of them being the angels, one of them being to the dragons. To me, that is like a snake, bro. I don't think it's a dragon, but well, to each their own. You should have emailed this so that Alice could have put it up so that people can see it. Here, again. No, no, nah. no, that's weak. That's weak, guys. Let's boo him wait, on the live wait, chat. Wait, boo. live chat, add, boo. let me know if you actually want to see it, and I will send it to Alex so he can show boo. it to you guys. Um this uh this these bones were found in China. They were dug up. But uh, a lot of Chinese, the Chinese always also had a belief in dragons. Okay, uh, how did this make news with Norbies? Well, I mean, this just to back up my my story. Um, my story of the ancient war between angels and dragons. That actually did happen. But that's just my my nerdy scientist uh, uh, part. Uh, oh, wait. Alex, this, go ahead and put up my picture, picture, picture number 2. Okay, let's see. There we go, Norbert. Holy shit. Okay, now, we said this last time, okay? I need your undivided attention. Stop texting. <laughs> Stop being on the live chat, guys. If he's on the live chat, throw tomatoes at him. Okay. <laughs> now, we said this last time that Diddy had dug himself a hole. Yes. Okay? He so many women were coming, were coming forward saying yep. that he did this, he did that, he did this, whatever. We like to say it here, did he do it? Okay, <laughs> but I also said because I knew security that worked for this man that yeah. walked in on him clapping cachetes. Oof. Okay, clack clack clack. Yeah, clack, exactly. Clack. And they weren't women's; they were men. Okay. Now, did he sued for sexual assault by a former male employee? Yeah. Norbert, say you work at Popeye's Chicken, hey, and you happen to walk by a girl and you just kind of like. Your hand falls down and it swipes one of her cheeks. Yeah. Now she says, you know, he. I tend to swing He, he groped me. Okay. Oh. He, he groped me. And I'm taking you to court, but I'm, I'll set out of court for $50,000. Damn. Okay. Now, say you walk by a male and you bump into him and he says, he groped me. Which rumor would you at least want out there of you? The girl or the dude? The girl. <laughs> You know, so, so you're saying it takes a lot of it takes a lot for a man to come forward to for something like that. And I do not think he is the only one, bro. Well, I mean, there's a good chance. I mean, he's probably a gay guy. Oh no, he is. Oh, okay. he is. So he's my my thing problem. is just come out and say it, bro. It'll save a lot. No, I mean the guy suing Puff Daddy. I, no, but both are. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So you know what, uh, Alice? Can you go ahead and put on the soup on the? That shit is crazy. I saw on the chat room. Just put, did he do it? D-I-D-D-Y, do it. I saw this one video of uh, Kevin Hart, Usher, and P. Diddy. I think he was having some party at his mansion. Uh-huh. And P. Diddy would just be there with Usher, and he would say, Hey, man, you remember we used to wake up in the morning together, and we would like, oh, I mean, uh, you know what I'm talking about. I'm like, damn. Yeah, bro. Yeah. Usher was like. Uh, uh. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Okay, like so that right there is just enough to be like anybody that plays around like that. And this guy has been drunk. Diddy has been drunk enough where he's been on. I think on the was it the Breakfast Club, and he's tell, told guys like, "Hey, what's up, Poppy? W when are we gonna party together? How can you don't party with me, Poppy?" Oh, I think that was the 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 other one, the one with Nor Nori Noriega. Okay, drink champs, whatever Drink one champ, of, Yeah, he was no, saying no, but even even on on. Um, um, I think he told somebody, "Wait, you gotta uh, let me take you shopping. Let me take you yeah, shopping." Yeah, him. 
But that one guy, what's it called? Something the God of Charlemagne. Oh, that dude's gay too. Oh, okay. Yeah, he is. So he was on there and they played him a recording. Yeah. And Puffy claims that that was him, but he doesn't remember that. And it was like some on some bisexual shit. I wouldn't be surprised if they, those two fools slept together. Right I wouldn't be surprised either. So shout out Charm- Charlemagne the God. <laughs> why would you want to shout that guy out after you just finished saying he was? Because I just <laughs> got fucked by dude. You're a sus gender male. Okay. Anyways, all right. So Norbert, I predicted this was going to happen, and it did. You did, and you now, did. And I'm going to predict another one. Okay. Oh shit. The, the, we're gonna have to come up with another name besides wizard. Yeah, exactly. Mm. That I'm telling you right now, the, the fortune wizard. I was gonna say Tony the prophet. Nah, too, too Not biblical. The it's too 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 Bibleish. Bibleish. Yeah. So more men are gonna come out, guaranteed. Jeez. Guaranteed. Did he do it? Did he? Oh yeah, he did. He, oh, he did that shit. All right, <laughs> go ahead, Norbert. Give us one. Knock it out the ballpark. No uh, more. I want to prove that there's dragons. Just give us the ghetto that's news. Just a, that's a good theory, a good story. Uh, okay, so previously, uh, it's always been known that uh, men are the psychopaths. That usually men are considered more than likely to be psychos. True. Throughout history, but new research and new study has shown that. It actually might be the same, if not more, that women, women. are more psycho. Psycho in what way? Like horny psycho? Or no, like, like bad psycho. Like they're bad shit crazy oh, I, psycho. I met some bad shit bitches. Yes. And Stay away it, from them. But the, the thing is that scientists or researchers couldn't, couldn't prove this part because when they think of a psychopath, they think of somebody that's more uh, violent. Yes. More physical. More, uh, more of that, that sort of stuff. They just now are realizing that women actually show it in a different way. Yes. Through uh, emotions, through not showing any type of empathy. Bro, they hide it very, very they, well, bro. And, that, and that's, why they, that's why they couldn't actually see right. that women are actually psycho. That's the crazy. Men are psychopaths in a violent way, but women are psychopaths in an emotional way. They, I believe that. And that's the, that's the research. So I do believe that uh, it finally proves a lot that what we've been saying. Women are psychos. I, I met a psychopath one time that straight told me. I couldn't get a guy until I bought titties. Fuck. And I said, that works for you? She goes, you'll be surprised how many people I hypnotize with these. I mean, it's true. I mean, who, who doesn't like a nice big pair of fucking jugs, you know? I mean, I mean, but there's dudes with man tits. Are you going to say the same thing about that? But that, that, that's in the man, Tony. <laughs> <laughs> You're saying big ones. I've seen guys I mean, that have women, man titties. Tony, women. women. You know what's sad when a, a dude has bigger titties than his girl? Ouch. Brother, that's how you know he's got money. I don't think so. Or like a fucking third leg. I think, uh, bad guys do not have big ones, period. I don't know. Well, then how explain that situation? Maybe it's he either had, money or fucking. Maybe he had the gift of gab. Hey, you never know. Hey, clar- can you uh, clarify to the audience what that means? The gift of gab. Yes. Um, he knows how to talk. He's got, he's got a way with women. Hey. Okay. That? Really? He, he's got a way with women. You know. What's You'll he- be surprised. I had a good friend. All he had to do was say one word, and for some reasons, all the women fell for it. What, what was that word? So beautiful. That's. The word that's, beautiful. That's Concentrate on one fucking that's, word, bro. That's two words. He's though. just not going to say <laughs> beautiful. <laughs> you said it was beautiful. Like, it was, no. Wait a What's up, that's beautiful? That one word, beautiful. What's up, Man, beautiful? Man, Tony, you probably, had, you probably were looking at his back and he was like, so beautiful, p- fucking a hundred dollar bill right there. No, I know the guy. <laughs> and you'll be surprised how many girls like, oh my God, oh my God. My boyfriend never even called me beautiful. My husband never, ever, believe me. He just had the gift of gab, bro. See, you don't have it, and you don't have the look, and you don't have the pizzazz. Hey, I'm just pizzazz. 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 But this guy had the gift of gab, and he knew how to talk to women, bro. Some women, some women fell for it. I guess it to believe it, Tony. Well, that tells me a lot about you, then. Two words. That tells me that you have never wooed a woman off of her feet. You're talking about a really heavy set guy. Well, he wasn't bad. Looking. He was just not good looking. He wasn't fat. 
He was just not good looking, bro. He probably, he probably had like a lot of cash. Hey, beautiful. Oh, my God. No. Nobody's ever said that There's to guys me. that have the gift With of gab. Really thick fucking Just man. like semi-decent looking broads can go to an ugly dude. Hey, good looking. And because nobody has ever called that dude good looking, they're like, I'll do whatever you want me so to do. So maybe he had the alpha eyes. You want me to go on his post and talk shit? You know, <laughs> like they had the alpha eyes. I don't know, but women, some women take gullible idiot men and make them do whatever they want because those men never had a semi looking hood rat tell them anything nice or kind. So and, yeah, and fine. It, I'm gonna get into that 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 topic about what you just said right now later okay, on. Get into it. Not it's another story. Okay, but. What I'm saying that there's weak men that would do that shit, bro. Ah, okay, yeah, there's so. There's but and then there's there. guys that have the gift of gab. I'm serious, hmm. bro. There's guys. Even, I don't care if they don't have no money, but I seen them with some fine bras, and I, and you're like, okay, how in the hell did that happen? Then the girl, I just like this personality. I like the way he treats me. I like the and that guy thinks he's the play. You playboy. know what? A girl could fall in love with a bum, like an actual homeless person. You think so? Yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't know. know if you, some of these homeless guys. Maybe she's a good woman. No, 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 no. They're they're fucking shredded. Like okay, some that, of these motherfuckers are shredded. And girls, they just they don't even look at the clothes. They don't look at the dirty hair. No, that's a damn. They, they just look at like, oh, this guy's shredded. Let I need to fuck this guy. That's what they're doing, and they do okay, it. Okay, see, I'm talking about you're talking about a bum sleeping in the back of an alley somewhere. Yeah, not they, that they, kind they, of bum, shredded. right? Yeah, I'm talking about that kind of bum. Like one. No, he yeah, smells like pee. They don't care. <laughs> They're like, fuck it. On, they're just bro. horny. You're way off. They're, they're just, just horny. horny. They're just horny. Okay, how come you don't get laid in? I'm not shredded <laughs> like that. <laughs> if I was shredded like that, I probably would be. If I walk around fucking everywhere without a shirt. Uh, yeah, yeah, call me the way I say it. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, was that my story or your story? That was your story, right? No, no. that was my story. Okay. Oh, that was my story. Okay, huh? bring up our next slide. Man, my story went good. Okay, Orca Winfrey. Okay. Holy shit. Now, my thing is this. Okay, you know, Orca Winfrey has been on Weight Watchers for the longest time. I thought she was the president. She's been on Weight Watchers for the longest time. Yeah. Okay. So, she makes a lot of money. She yeah. tells people, this is what you eat. You stay fit. Yes. This is what you eat. It's yes. good for you. Yeah. This is what you eat. This portion here. Yeah. Portion there. Blah, yeah. blah, blah. For years. Yeah. Okay. Come to find out, she steps away from being Weight Watch, being on Weight Watchers anymore. Yeah, no, that makes sense. Okay, she goes through her phases. Okay, no, this is her first time leaving. What? Okay, this is why I, this is I'm bringing it up. Oh, okay. Not because I like her. Oh. But um, come to find out, she was exposed that she wasn't losing the weight through the Weight Watchers. She was actually taking medication shots. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah so now, is that is that fraud? Oh, yeah, that's fraud. As, well, no. I mean, because, wait, no. medica- wait, what was the medication doing? Making her lose weight. You know, you could take shots to help you lose weight, bro. Like, it, was, it would burn the fat? Or? I have no idea, bro. I mean, Call her and ask her. But that's what I'm thinking. Is she still eating the same weight, or is she still eating proportions? That I don't know. Well, that's, that's what you got to do your but research, Tony. She- <laughs> Go ahead. I dare you to open up your mouth like that wide again. I got something for it. <laughs> Go, go. <laughs> okay. Yeah. okay, so now, but that's why she stood away because people started finding yeah. out and started saying, you're telling people to eat this to lose weight, but yet you got an extra boost. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's always been like that. And, and the sad part is that people look at these fitness models on Instagram or these influencers and they, they fucking sell their fucking weight loss teas or their... Oh, uh, they're fucking whatever the yeah, fuck whatever those the, body the time master. Those, not knowing that these people either get surgery or fucking get a uh, tummy tugs or get fucking lipo. Yes, and these people believe these people. Yeah, I mean the only ones that are like super straight is because that's literally their job. They get paid yeah. to lose weight, but these people they these people sell it to them like if I could do it, you could do it. Yeah, no, that's no, exactly but, what they but do. But people bro. work. People don't have fucking time six hours to fucking work out. They yeah. don't fucking only eat fucking chicken and fucking salmon. See, but here's my thing. It would be like this. If somebody told me, and by the way, uh, just recently, a good friend of mine hit me up and told me, Tony, I want to start going to the gym with you. And I said, cool, man. 
And he's been faithful going every day with me. Oh, okay? really? Yes. He needs to lose some weight. So I told him for one month, all we're going to do is just to get your body moving. We're going to hit the treadmill. First treadmill? week. I wouldn't, Tony. You never worked out. So how you know? I have. Okay. Powerlifter, I'd have you Anyways, know. so first, I haven't told you who this person is, and I'm not going to get into details. Okay. First first week, 30 minutes cardio. Second week, yeah. 40 minutes cardio. Third week, one hour. Yeah. Uh, the next one, we move on to elliptical. Yeah. He's got to get his legs moving because yeah. he is overweight extremely. Okay. Okay. Got gotcha. you. So, uh, because, let's be honest, and I'm just talking good health here. There are people that are not in good health, bro. Yeah. Especially people that are in diabetes. Yes. Okay. You need to start doing something. Because oh, yeah. let me tell you something. Not only for yourself, but yeah. for your family. Yeah. If you're a fucking fat, overweight dude that doesn't give a shit and you just want to party. Yeah. Somebody ever tr- breaks into your family and tries to defile your wife or your children. What good are you going to be to them? You be. <laughs> yeah. You go. <laughs> what good are you going to be to them? Yeah. I'll just grab a gut. Nobody sleeps with a gun under their pillow, bro. Yeah. You know, I'm sorry. Nobody does. You know, so. And then their fat fingers won't fit their it, inside. It, and exactly. Then they won't be able to hold it. So my thing is this. So I encourage them. So that's going good. Yeah. But my thing is this. I'm not going to tell somebody, come work out with me. Expect him to lose weight. And if I don't ask him also, now you got to also watch your intake. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's very, very important is yeah. his intake. Yeah. Or say, say I tell him, just start eating healthier. You lose weight. No, you got to work out. They go hand in hand. Yeah. Well, yeah. All of it goes hand in hand, especially for weight loss. I mean, one diet is going to work the most because if you cut off sugar, just cutting off sugar will fucking drop weight fast. Just cutting off bread out of your life and tortillas, tortillas. will fucking. But you know what? And I want to go back to the running part, the cardio. Like, if you are overweight, do not do cardio. And, and hear me out because you're putting a lot of weight on your bones, on your joints. You're going to damage them. There's a reason why runners need knee surgeries when they fucking retire. But they're not overweight. Because they, and they're not overweight because they fucking destroy their fucking knees after running for so many years. My recommendation would always be light exercise with weights, very light, but enough to get your heart going. I mean, it would almost equate to cardio because the whole point of cardio is to get your heart going, right? Okay. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> when I see nobody no at the gym, I'll come back to, with you, to you guys. You know, well, actually, you know why? Be, I say this because right now it's a good time to try to work out, mostly because you don't have to sign up to a gym anymore. You could go to your local park. And there's one good thing that I like about the city that they actually did. They put all these outdoor workout machines. And oh, but those are for senior citizens. Those, those right? aren't for senior citizens. Yes, they are. You know why? Because they, you, what you would do, and this is my recommendation, if you can't afford a gym or you just don't want to show up to a gym because you feel intimidated, and I completely understand that part, go to these parks that have these equipment, that these little training machines. All you have to do is do a few sets of each. Bounce around to each one. Do each one like three times or four times. Do it three times a week, and believe me, you will lose weight. Says the man that's in shape. I don't have time. I don't have time. <laughs> but you oh, have time to give if, advice. But if you have the time, go for it. It's Trust me. time. I, okay, when, let's, when, let's when, I, when I was training to power lift. Okay, Jack Lane. When I was training to power lift, it wasn't easy. It was hard. Actually, I wouldn't even recommend anybody do power lifting. Who was your teacher? Uh, huh? uh, Richard Simmons? No, no. It was, it was a YouTube guy named, uh, they, they, he used to be in the Gladiators called, his name was Titan. But uh, it was this tall guy. He had a tight end? Titan. Oh. And then he, him and then another cool ass guy, his name's uh, Joey Swole. I don't know if you, ever know, if you know who he is. Joey Swole is like this like gym influencer. Really cool. Look him up. This, these people are really cool because they'll train you for free. Like you, they if you find them at a gym, they will train you. All right, let's go on. But uh, because you already missed up my whole thing over giving gym advice, <laughs> and he doesn't go because he doesn't have time. I say you know because Tony's workout regimen might be more advanced for others. All right, <laughs> go ahead, Norbert. All right, so I have good news to a lot of females. I don't know if you're familiar, but 
I there's from time to time you will hear a female say, "Man, my cousin, oh my god, he's the finest guy you've ever known." Like they're like my cousin is super fine. I don't know if you ever heard females talk like that about their cousins. Yeah, like they they, they brag about. Yeah, their oh my members. god, my cousin has the the, the be- most beautiful eyes. My cousin's sexy. Like any girl will be like, well, I got good news for those girls now. Why? Because apparently it's okay to fuck your cousin. Who in the hell said that? Uh, apparently, uh, researchers in at in the UK said that it's okay because if you do happen to fuck your cousin and you do happen to have a kid with them, it, you have less chances of you know <laughs> m- mutations. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> fuck, Alex, can, can you can you read us the poll? Did he do it? <laughs> so that's good news for the for those women that we'll like come back to show. that. We're gonna come back to that. Go ahead. <laughs> Right here, 151 <laughs> votes. The question is, did he do it? 92% said, hell yeah, pero. Hey. And 8% said, no, he's innocent. Okay. Wow. 8, 8%. Okay. All right. Those, so, that, those got to be the cucks. Of course. But now back to the cousin. Okay. Yes. Um. So, I mean, in the UK, they're, they're, they're pushing that narrative that... Uh, that it's okay because if it, if it's a cousin, you're less likely to have, you know, uh, like okay, no, but mutations. Uh, mutations. Okay, now let me ask. Do you think that's a good idea? <laughs> I don't think that's a good idea. I, I and quite honestly, I always thought it was weird when I would hear females have these compliments about their male cousins. No, I would hear that too. Now, like I would be like, sometimes, you know, on Instagram, like when you like scroll through the, like, is it the search or what is it? The feed, the feed, the feed. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you just get everybody's shit. Okay. Yeah. 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 You'll get guys that are like in the middle of nowhere. Let's just say at a Santa Monica pier and they just start asking people questions. Yeah. 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 And like, they'll say something like, uh, how long have you guys been together? You know, and they'll say, Oh, you know what? Um, three years. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, you think your boyfriend's really hot? Oh, yeah, yeah. Does he have a big one? And she was like, oh. And then the guy would be like, tell me the truth. Yeah. And he goes, okay, let me ask you a question. And I thought this was weird. Yeah. The dude asked her, does he have good-looking brothers? And then she goes, oh, my God, are you going to put me on the spot? And then the, the guy's, like, turning, like, looking at her. And she's like, okay, he's asking me to be real. It's yes, bitch. but I like his cousin better. Oh, my God. Hey, bitch. Yeah, okay, so my thing is, these people are that fucking bold. You don't even know who in the fuck this guy is with the mic. Yeah. And then here you the are confessing that you, not only would you bone my brother, but my cousin. Can she be trusted? Fuck no. Wait, okay. wait, wait. Let me ask you, Tony. Was she white? They were all white. <laughs> They're all white. So my whole point is this. I think that only so far from what I've seen, it's only been white people that do this. Yeah. So now the next one was, you know, um, uh, is it true that people in Alabama, okay, or in Arkansas, one of those, yeah. fucks their cousins, and then one guy goes, if you never fucked your, your own cousin, then you're not from Alabama. <laughs> what oh, you're the not- fuck? Yeah, bro, so. <laughs> is that the state model? <laughs> like, so I just don't know what what possesses people to do that. It Could it be, I don't make no excuses, small town, houses are a mile away, you hardly ever see anybody, but your cousin lives across the street. Yeah, ah, that could be, man. Because, I mean... Now, what about people that live in the rancho? Mm-hmm. That just might be, dude. That just might be. Like I said, man, and when I say that hear girl, when I hear girls say that, they're, they're raza girls. You know, they're, they're brown, and I'm like, that's your cousin, though. Like, I know. I, 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 wouldn't, know. Say, I wouldn't say that. I, I wouldn't say I, that. I've known dudes that have bragged about boning their cousins, but here's... And their first cousin. Like... His dad and my dad are brothers. Okay. <laughs> Holy fuck, bro. <laughs> yeah, bro. And then I'm like, uh, how could you bone her? And here's the excuse all the time. Well, I didn't know her growing up. So, you know, we, it, we it, saw, it, we see each other from time to time. And I thought she was fine. We both got buzzed. And we just said, fuck it. Yeah, bro. I'm like, all right. I don't give a shit. Look, let me tell you something. I don't give a shit if she is fine. Yeah. You're my cousin and I have to respect. Yeah, you. definitely. So Ay, that's, that's fucking it. Weird. Shit. Yeah, it is weird. All right, well, you know, which good news for those girls that uh, want well, fuck their cousins because apparently it's okay now. Now you know the the the, the one uh, argument that the UK has is that that it's because the US made it made it into a taboo thing, whereas in the UK they're like 
well, if they're second cousins, yeah, it's all right. Nah, bro. Well, again, they they, they only blame the, the U.S. because the U.S. culture made it into a taboo. All right, all right. But hey. They're just trying to say it isn't, a ta- it isn't over there, but they made it a taboo here. Yes. So their argument is like, don't feel bad if you want to fuck your cousin. Would you? No. So we asked, did he do it? Would you do it? <laughs> Hell no. Hell no. Uh, what about you, Alice? Would you do it? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you want to put that on the, on, the, on, on the chat? Would you bone your own relative? Oh, let's see. I got a feeling we're going to get another 8%. Yeah, let's, let's put that on there. Let, let's, test, let's test waters. You know? <laughs> and I'm only bringing this up because <laughs> Nomer brought that up. Okay? That's the story. It, it was the story, was story. of a lovely lady. <laughs> what song was that? Uh, Brady Bunch. Brady Bunch. I was going to say Gilligan's Island for a second. I think it is. No, but no, you know no. what? It's funny, though, because I think I heard... Uh, uh, Put it up there, Alex. I heard an artist uh, say that they got the, one of their famous track from Gilligan's Island. So let it win. Yeah. Let it win, yeah. That's right. He got yeah. it. He got it from uh, Gilligan's Island. Yeah. He took the melody. Yeah. That's what I, li- I listen for melodies. That's bro. fucking crazy. That's fucking yeah. crazy. It's the same thing with like the the with uh with the guy from Nirvana that got his uh the drums from fucking uh the I think it was the Gap Band. Oh, you were telling me about that. Yeah, that he, yeah. all his drums from the first album he got him off the Gap Band. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, what the fuck? Like, uh, um, it's melodies. Remember the Smurfs? Do you remember the theme song for the Smurfs? No. You don't? No. But have you heard recently that they're making all these videos how the Smurfs were actually evil? No, I'm talking about, well, we'll come back to that. Okay. But the Smurfs, you don't yeah. remember that? No, 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 no. That was before my time. <laughs> okay. The reason why I bring it up. <laughs> yeah. There was a guy out of Florida, and he actually came to Wilmington and performed at the Longshoreman Hall. Okay. His name is Gigolo Tony, and the song's called Smurf Rock. Okay? Smurf Rock. And it started off with the theme from the Smurfs. La, 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 la. And let me tell you something. That song on the underground was a fucking big ass hit, bro. Really? Hell yeah. That's, you got a grown ups dancing to la, 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 la. And they put la, in there, that, that, those drums. Boom, boom. No, no, it, no, bro. It was like some fast up tempo shit. Oh. Boom, 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 boom. Yes. Oh, shit. All right. Good shit. Bye. Bye. You know, like you said, man, it's okay to take, but you got to make it different. You got to twist it, make it your own, not fucking keep it the same way. Exactly. Exactly. Okay, let's go with my last slide. And today, this was something that was trending today. It was about the boxer, Ryan Garcia. Uh, it's the last one, bro. Like, fuck, Alex. <laughs> <laughs> we showed up early to go through this, and this is what I'm getting. So, hey. The next slide, you better get them right. Or his time is ticking, pal. Okay. Ryan Garcia. There was a rumor going around on social media that his social media was hacked. Yes. Did you hear about it? Yes. Okay. Wait, 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 wait. Yes. Okay, why did you do that? Because I heard I heard two different stories. Okay, give it give us the two stories. I heard uh one exaggerated one from a community that consistently puts out fake exaggerated news. And then I saw one that was reputable that had a, a great title to it. Which made a lot of sense. And okay, what did the first one say? That well, you can I, think recall? The, I think the first one was saying that this dude was dead. He's like he actually died, died. Oh, okay. Whereas the reputable one said it, his fans had concerns. Yeah, fans That's expressed it. concern over Ryan Garcia's recent post. Yes. So the post was this that in so many words that either he was killed. Yeah. He died, you know, or somebody, you know, yeah, whatever. He got de- deleted. He got deleted. Okay. Yeah. So now let's go to the next one, Alex, so that way we can uh, r- kind of read it. Okay. This one says this, and this was on his page. It says, we got him, boys. Ryan Garcia, RIP bitch. 666. Video is exactly 666 in time. We told you, 
you we were going to ha ha blah 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 that's what it says guys ha ha blah 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 gibberish yeah a bunch of gibberish and then anna on z nana z and s b b b shared blah 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 z that's what it says on that post and that was posted on his page then the the caption on his page read um uh, the 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 deleted of deletion of ryan garcia Bill Haney was right on that one. Ba, Anaba, Anaba, Ah, Baphomet, Baphomet. Ha, ha, ba, ba, ba. This is why you don't mess with us at the top, bitch. Ass, bitch. Ah, ha, ba, snap, 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 Whatever those words are. Okay. Yeah. It's, 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 <laughs> That's what it says, bro. So I don't know. So th- there were concerns because supposedly nobody had heard from him. Mm, yeah. You know, n- n- nobody had, um, you know, whatever, bro. Yeah. But obviously, I think they're saying he's not. He's not deceased. No, he's you not. Know, you know, he's not deceased. But somebody supposedly hacked. According, his, to, the, according to real reports. Right. Uh, his account was hacked. Okay. And uh, he's unable to actually access it at the moment. They're trying to get it back, but it's from, he hasn't put out a statement yet, but people that are inside his camp are, are saying that he's okay. Okay. Sometimes, look, he's 25 years old, and sometimes I wonder um, if sometimes this much stardom today in a social media world where you can go viral instantly. Yes. Instantly, yes. you know, if, if it's too much too soon for a lot of these young kids, because when you look at stardom, 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, yeah. and 90s, it was a lot for yeah. a lot of these guys, bro. Yeah. But now, and it, and, it, and it took a lot to go around the world. Yeah. Now you could go around the world going viral. Yeah, you could. You know? I mean, we didn't have social media to have followers, to like our pictures, yeah. to comment on. Mm-mm. We didn't have any of that. Where, where, where is... You know, so and so going to be performing way harder. Yeah, and, and you know, there's the one thing I hate that a lot of these cocksuckers they say, uh, "Oh, well, I was bigger than they are." Went back in their days. Then they were back in their days. Motherfucker, you have social media. You have social media. They have social media. Yeah, you have they, cell phones. They, they got like it. ten second interviews on radio stations. Period. What the fuck? Yeah. So apparently he's okay. So yeah. you could take that down, Alex. So yeah. it's a good thing. Now the guy he's gonna fight. Do you know? Do you know the guy he's about no, to fight? No, I don't know. Okay. The guy's in a fight. Uh, I'm not sure his name, and uh, you guys look it up. Because as of recently, I'm not a big boxing fan, bro. Like, I'm not gonna watch this fight unless somebody invites me and they have it for free. Yeah. Well, okay. That might be that might be the key though, right there, Tony. Yeah. So you know? my thing is this: Ryan Garcia went to the gym. Yes. Wearing a picture of his opponent. Yes. Partying with Diddy. Holy shit. Yes, bro. On some Mick Mill shit, right? I, Mill? I guess so, yeah. Sheesh. So Ryan Garcia is training, and he's showing everybody that the guy that he's about to fight parties with Diddy. Dang. And they're both wearing no shirts, and they're standing side by side. Oh, shit. Okay, somebody sent it to me and put, did he do him? <laughs> <It's like that. laughs> so, oh, he did that shit. So, yeah, that's my thing, bro. Well, I mean, you know what? That's, think- that's a very low blow, but that's... That's the social media world. But, you know, you pointed out something right there that's very important, Tony. You wouldn't pay for it. I, I, I feel like a lot more people feel the exact same way. And what, this might just be this might just be on some clout shit. Right. He might have, they just might have done that just so they could get attention. Because they're realizing, too, drama sells. And that's what sucks, bro. And then the, and and boxing isn't hasn't been a good place ever since UFC just took off. Yeah, and in De La Hoya over here releasing videos of himself playing uh, uh, um, golf and his butt huggers, and you're the one that sent it to me. <laughs> what does that mean? No, I wasn't. You sent what it to mean? me. Yeah, I you. sent you another one, but what, let me let me go confirm of, that. Of De La Hoya I, playing golf in his house. I don't think that was me. That was you in his butt huggers, bro. Who's want to see yeah. his ass? Let me make sure which one I sent you. So. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> All right. Norbert, give us one more, and then I got to address some, something. Okay. Oh, okay. Give All us right. a good one. 
All right. Yeah, good one, huh? Fuck, I got two good ones. Okay, well, give us one now and then one after. All right, all right, all right. So you said, like, it's funny because you just said that, you know, anybody can get famous now because of social media. Yes, very true. All right. And if, uh, if Alex, were you able to put up that, get that picture in there that I sent you? It, uh, this woman here, her name is Abby Newman, 28. She spent four days behind the bars after being arrested for drunken shoplifting at a Walmart. She's very classy. Um, crazy, crazy thing is that apparently she released her mugshot. And she this girl, it? yeah, she released it and she started blowing up. Hmm. And then the crazy part is that when she noticed that she was blowing up, people found out that she had an OnlyFans. Oh, that she had an OnlyFans. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yes. There she is right there. That she had an OnlyFans. And as soon as people found that out, they started pouring money into her account. This chick became rich overnight really? because of her mugshot. Wow. Now, it's crazy because, like you said, you could become famous because yeah. of social media in an instant. This true. chick fucking robbed the place while she was drunk. She, dro- she robbed a Walmart while she was drunk wow. and became rich. Only in America, folks. Only in America can a female get drunk off her ass, go to a Walmart, j- who knows what the fuck she stole, Yeah, open up an OnlyFans, and instantly become rich. I wow. mean, when they say the American dream is dead, I like to think that this, uh, this guy... You, can, you can't get it? Can I get it? Okay. Okay, well, it's fine. Well, if you guys want the picture, I'll send it to you. DM me. But yeah. So she robbed something, a store. Walmart. Walmart. Sure. Drunk. Drunk as hell. Stayed in jail four days. Four days. Who releases the mugshot? She did. On where? Like social media? Yeah, or social media. Then people like did their homework on her, find out she has her OnlyFans, and like, fuck, let me go see. Yes. Fuck. And she said, and now she's. Now she has all these nice pictures of herself traveling because <laughs> she's got money now. <laughs> what kind of shit is that? <laughs> now, is it possible or is this the case that toxic men that like are attracted to toxic women? Okay, yeah. there we go. Bring it up. There you go. That's her, guys. That's her mugshot. I don't know who would be attracted to that to go, oh, my God, let me go pour some money in her OnlyFans. Well, I like to think that, that you, know, you know how girls get horny over guys with tattoos? Yes. Uh, yes. I, I think now is the opposite. Because if you, you can see, she's, you're, you're she's prob- very blasted up. You're probably right. And I think beta guys are now, that they, they need somebody that, that would beat them up. And then that, that girl looks like the one that, that would, you know, punish them. Back. Do those type of men exist? No, I think there are a lot more of them these days. I think uh, a lot more uh, beta males. And you know what, Tony? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say it's not their fault. There's a possible chance that they, unfortunately, were not raised by their father. Because... Now, you're not saying that for every single one, right? <sighs> when it comes to beta males, especially the ones from these times that are making women like that rich... Or is it is it possible that maybe this motherfucker just has a kinky ass fetish? That's a lot of motherfuckers with a kinky ass. Fetish. I'm not saying all of them though. You're saying all of them. <laughs> You're saying all of them. Then I have a father. Is that many fathers missing? Yeah. Okay. Why did you turn out the way you did? <laughs> <laughs> I am my that. <laughs> but uh, no, I think that that it's no. There are that many that's missing, but they're not missing intentionally, Tony. This goes back to the psychopath story. Okay, so that you, a lot of these women intentionally do not want these men to be part of their children's life just because they're angry at them, right? Right. Out of spite, and who suffers, man? And now this is why we have a world where a lot of these women that have big old titties, ass, ugly face, can be millionaires. Alex, let me ask you a question. Do you believe what Norbert said about that it's all men that are betas just because they don't have a father? Pro- well, I don't know. It just depends on how you were raised, right? So, No, listen to what he said. He didn't say how well, you were raised. If, if your dad is not an alpha and he's just a beta, then he's just going to teach you beta stuff, no? 
Oh, okay. What yeah, is beta yeah. stuff? No, honey, treat her like a queen. Uh, make sure you you do everything for her. Make That's sure make sure you open the door for her. Make sure you damn you're you, doing you, things you that a gentleman her. would do. You're saying things that, that a gentleman would do. But that's not respected anymore, Tony. No, well, I know that, but you got to use wisdom on who you do that with. Well, you, you, You're not going to do that to a fucking hood rat. <laughs> She's worth a 40 ounce and a hamburger special and maybe the motel parking lot. <laughs> not even get a room. Uh, but it's not respected. It's not respected. I don't man, know who you go out man, with. Man, man, the, the, the new generation of men, the, they're asking women for money. Okay, well, and they give it. <laughs> Who do you blame, the women or the men? They're not opening doors for them, I'll tell you that much. But Because that's not a man, and that's not a woman. Unfortunately, the time says that that's the man right there. <laughs> I don't know if I'm not saying that. that and I'm not saying that's, that's me saying that, Tony. That's not me saying that, but that is the culture that is now. <sighs> Alex, what do you think? <laughs> okay, the, let me ask you this, Alex. <laughs> what, what kind... What kind of man would be attracted to that, wo that woman's mugshot? A uh, toxic person. Are you asking me or are you telling me? No, she looks like a toxic person, so. Yeah. But, it, but, it, yeah, but, but isn't there men that just are attracted to toxic women? They don't necessarily have to be betas. Well, that, and that's, but that's crazy, though, because like I said, you know, it's just like women that are attracted to guys that are all tatted up. <laughs> right. They don't even give a fuck if he's an asshole or that he even killed somebody. He was a low life, they whatever. They still want to fuck him. You're right. I give you that. <laughs> I give you that. Thank but you. I'm not going to say that all those women are that way because they didn't have a father. Or you they didn't sure? have a mother. I'm not going to say that. You sure? So some of those people that I know of just fucking chose to do that shit. I like that motherfucker right there. You know, yeah. I, well, I like that girl right there. Is that there. blasted up? Yeah. I met, I met dudes that come from good conservative, like, homes where they were raised like someone in the church. The mom was a good conservative woman. The dad was an alpha male. And this motherfucker liked everything that was not his mother. Like, the role model that his mom was, you would think that's what he grew up seeing I like a woman, you know, that wears nice dresses. She does her hair. She goes to work. She she makes dad's food. She has a towel ready for him. You know, uh, she makes her own money. Strong woman. She helps me with my homework. When I'm sick, she takes care of me. All good qualities. But he goes for the 40 ounce blunt smoking fake titty tattooed, you know. The fuck happened? That's that's. All I'm saying. Well, the, okay, but well, what if that alpha dad was absent for most of his life? Well, I, no, but I, this is the true story is what I'm telling you. I, oh, yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. Because I know these people. So, yeah, I just, he always told me, I just, I love my mother, but I like this kind of women. And I was like, okay, cool. So you're telling me the dad was around the whole time? Yeah. Played basketball, did homework with the Whatever son, he might have, dad was always there, stuff. bro. Dad was always there? Yeah. Wow. And he was... Yeah. And I've known several people like that. He was bro. conservative. Yeah. Okay. So, see, but you're, what you're saying is that, no, it's always the dad's fault. He wasn't there. That's why that motherfucker likes these type of girls. I cannot say that and just say everybody, Norbert. And you're saying everybody. Well, maybe that was the point. Because the dad was attracted to uh, his mom. He didn't want to be like the dad. So he went for the opposite of the mom. Okay, yeah, I get it. At the end of the day, it was the dad. Let's blame the dad. <laughs> dad, because you like mom, I like the opposite. That because, makes sense. Because why would he like his mom? <laughs> okay, let's get to the matter at hand. We're switch, <laughs> switching subjects. Uh, Alice, get ready and play the video. I'll tell you when, okay? All right. Um, just recently, I don't know if it was yesterday or the day before, somebody sent me a clip of Kid Frost, yes, whom I've been knowing for the longest time. Um, that he called in some uh, uh, somebody's podcast, yes, and uh, they asked him questions about me, something like, "There's a podcaster going around saying that he started Chicano rap, he is Chicano rap." Who? You? Y yes, yeah. Podcaster saying. Let me finish. I'm asking you not to interrupt. There's a podcaster going around saying that I have been saying 
that I started Chicano rap. I am Chicano rap. Uh, I was there since the beginning. No, I can say I was there since the very beginning. That I will say. I've never considered myself Chicano rap, period. The guy that I produce two songs. As a matter of fact, I had three songs on Part 106, hey, 1991. Hey. Uh, um, I'm Not Your Puppet, Sitting in the Park, and mm. Leave My Curls Alone. Mm. I had three songs on the radio, and I got a gold record out of it. That was released in 1991, a year before, I mean, I'm sorry, a year after La Raza dropped and blew up, okay? La Raza changed the game. Frost knows it, everybody knows it, and everybody who says that it didn't is lying, okay? So, um, classic song, but... Uh, this podcaster goes on and he asks this kid Frost something like, uh, uh, would you ever go on Rodium Radio or something like that? And he says, no, no, you'll never see me on Rodium Radio. That's what he says. You'll never see me on Rodium Radio. When I heard that, I, I didn't understand if there was any animosity because I've been knowing Frost for a long time. Um, I thought we were cool. I thought we had open communication. As a matter of fact, the last time I seen Frost was here in this exact studio when he contacted me and asked me, to, to, can he be on my Rodeo Mixtape documentary? Mm. And I said, sure. Yeah. We booked him. He came. He sat down pretty much approximately right here. And I interviewed him for the Rodeo Mixtape documentary. And you guys can see it on there because this man has history. Okay. A lot of people don't know he was signed to Ice T's label, Rhyme Syndicate. Mm. I knew about that because I'm a fan of Frost. Mm. So with that being said, uh, I'm going to play you guys the clip that I did uh, paying homage to Frost. And, and, and mute our mics. What do you get when you get two Chicanos in one room? You get a rhodium mixtape documentary. I'm here sitting with a living legend, Kid Frost. Most of you guys know him as Kid Frost. I just know him as the homie. And I'm just here to pay homage to him because most people know him from La Raza. I've known him since Rough Cuts, Terminator, back from the 80s. I've, not only do I consider him a friend, but I'm also a fan. Not only did, did he get, get awards, not only did he make wonderful performances, and if I'm correct, he even performed at the Apollo Theater. Yeah. Not too many people have done that. But one thing about La Raza, it just wasn't a great song, but that song actually started a movement. And it actually started with this man. And I'm just here to pay homage to him, to thank him for opening the doors for many of us Latinos. So, you ever run into this? Legend right here, walk up to him, just tell him thank you. And we out. Thank you, brother. All right. Or a mic back on? Okay. That was a video that I did in uh, March 2018 when he was here. And uh, ever since then, we've been good. Now, um, let's put up picture number one uh, when he's here in the studio. There's a picture, uh, we took uh, various pictures, but I, there's a couple of them that I want to bring up. That's me right there interviewing him, and he's pretty much approximately sitting where I'm at right here. We had a dope, dope interview, and he, he had a lot, a lot of wisdom, dropped a lot of gems. And uh, uh, go ahead and put the next one where we're get, getting him with the slate. Okay, that's another one right there. Um, I'm posting these up because he said he would never come here. That, that's fine. I don't have a problem with that. He hasn't, not, not only just not been here, but he hasn't been on a lot of podcasts. When's the last time any of you guys have ever seen him, you know, physically on a podcast? You know, it, he doesn't really do much uh, of them. Now, one thing about Frost that I want to bring up, and I don't expect a thank you because he didn't know what I'm about to share with you. Um, a lot of you guys know this person because this person not only stalks me, but also accuse me of false allegations. And I can say her name because I won my uh, defamation case. And as a matter of fact, this upcoming May of this year, it'll be two years since I won my case on this person. For people that do not know what defamation is, it's pretty much this person, Sandra Avila, or they, they, she goes by on Instagram, uh, Sandy Pants, uh, uh, um, she accused me of some false allegations. When I took her to court, they found out that she was lying. She was found guilty unanimously by a jury of 12. And, uh, you know, I went public when I went on American Cholo's podcast and he read my paperwork and, you know, the rest is history. But one thing that a lot of people do not know, and it's important that I share this, um, I could say her name because I won my case. 
Every time she goes or calls or comments, she can never say my name because she lost. That's the difference. Now, what you may not know is that she was Frost's ex-girlfriend. When I went to go visit Frost in the hospital, um, he had told me that this was a girl he was talking to. She came here one time, and I was supposed to actually meet them both here. I wanted to interview Frost. He said he wanted to see how the show ran. She showed up. He didn't. He calls me, and he's very, very upset, and he tells me, you know what? Uh, hurry up and get that fat bitch out of there. Is she there? And I'm like, yeah, she's here. Tell her to get the fuck out of there. I said, okay, no problem, bro. Listen, do me a favor, bro. I don't talk to you that way, so please don't talk to me that way. Okay? That was the first time that Frost ever raised his voice at me. Cool, whatever. I don't know what type of relationship they had. So I went up to her and I said, you're going to have to leave. He doesn't want you here. I believe that was our first time here. Walked her outside. Most of you guys that have been here know I walk you guys out the gates right here. The moment I opened up the gate, she turned around and she said, Frost raped me. That's what she said. He beat me. He uh, cheated on me. He likes young girls. Uh, he's the Chicano R. Kelly. He's this, he's that, he's that. All I said was this, go to the cops. That's what I said. Go to the cops. Oh, no, they won't believe me. So she started going on a smutting campaign smutting this man's name because he wanted nothing to do with her. Keep in mind, according to her, um, they were in a two-month relationship. Within that two months, she claims that she had his miscarriage because she goes around literally talking about that like that's something to brag about. I don't know any woman that goes around bragging about that. Then she tells me that she was in the hospital. She calls him to tell him that she just miscarried. He supposedly tells her off or whatever. Okay, then within those same two months, I'm calling her out on this. And I'm calling you guys that try to press up on me to go hit her up as well. Tell her to lift up the back of her hair. Okay, tell her to lift up the back of her hair. She has a picture of Kid Frost's face in the back of her neck. I wonder why she never shows that. Okay, so this was a two-month relationship that supposedly was going on. Okay. It's funny that within two months, she would get a tattoo of Frost's face in the back of her neck. But knowing me for only four months, she makes me the beneficiary of her will. Jeez. Okay? Now, after Frost didn't want nothing to do with her for whatever reasons, um, she starts posting about him. Go ahead and uh, put up the post one. Okay, that's what she put on there. I did this. I guess she's bragging that she got him on Dash Radio to do an interview. And I'm going to give it time so you guys can look that that's her picture at the far left-hand corner. Okay, let's go to the next one. So the next one is this. I also put him on, and he did the most fucked up shit to me. If you know the real story, you already know what's going on. So she was going on a campaign, pretty much, trying to smut up his name. Now, what Frost didn't know is that this person... She hung around for about seven and a half months before I pretty much gave her the boot, which was May 10th, 2020, okay? Her first time here was October 4th, uh, uh, 19, um, October 4th, uh, 2019, okay? That's when I started the podcast, okay? That was her first time here. So within seven and a half months, I knew this person. The reason why she hung around here was because she always wanted to come on this platform to expose him. I'm going to expose him because he sexually assaulted me. He's a chomo. He's this. Everything that she accused me of, she had on him first. So I sat her down one day and I told her this. I'm not going to allow you to destroy this man's life because you're angry because things didn't work out. Okay? Yeah, you got a tattoo. You claim you had this miscarriage. You claim these things didn't work out. Cool, whatever. But I'm not going to allow you to come on this platform and destroy this man's life. That's what she wanted to do. Frost never knew about this, okay? And I, I don't want a thanks because I don't deserve a thanks. My thing is this, that's what friends do. I'm not going to allow anybody to come on here and allow anybody to smut this man's name up, and that's what she wanted to do, really to kill and destroy everything that this man ever built. And he didn't deserve that, so I didn't do that, okay? So when then... When I tried contacting him to let him know, go, go ahead and put up the next post. 
okay, here she is contacting Frost's ex-wife. Frost's ex-wife. And let me read that to you. And by the way, if any of you guys want these things, uh, they'll be available tomorrow. DM me and I'll send them to you. Because hmm. this is all public record. She, this is stuff she's already posted. Hey, doll. And this is uh, Sandy Pants. Hey, doll, I text you. It's an emergency. Please get a hold of Frost and tell him not to talk to Tony, please. I wonder why. Then she puts her phone number in there uh, bec- um, for Kid Frost's wife to go ahead and contact her. Kid Frost's wife contacts me and tells me, you know, I don't know what's going on, but this girl's trying to destroy, you know, my, my ex, uh, Frost. I'm not going to do this. So what happened was pretty much a year later, after I tell her, a year later, after May 10th, 2020, a year later, somebody calls me up and tells me, this girl is getting ready to put out a video on you. I hadn't seen her in a year. Okay, cool, whatever. And then she comes up with a video accusing me of the same allegations that she was about to accuse or put on him. So she didn't waste them. She just said, let me just use them on Tony. And that's what happened. Now, she contacts this girl, Mindy, and says, I need you to post this about Tony. Uh, Let's smut his name. And here's what she said. She used wisdom. Look, before I do this, I need you to tell me, show me uh, proof that he did this to you. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and prove it to you. Never sent her anything. If anything, Sandy Pants blocked Mindy, and then she goes on her smutting job, smutting up Frost's ex. Go ahead and post, post the next one. Here she goes right there. Uh, now read, damn, told y'all I wish uh, I wasn't lying. Good thing I have a conversation in case Mr. Alvarez wants to bring up in court. I have receipts. Don't play with me. Blah, blah, blah. Go ahead and put up the next one. And these are all posts by this girl. Okay. The next one is pretty much smutting her up. So whoever doesn't side with this person, she smuts up. Now, one, one last point is that all of these podcasters that have come against me and that are talking about me, if you look closely, she's involved with all of them. Boom, boom, boom. She's involved with all of them. And once again, I could say her name because I won my case. Sandra Avila, Sandy Pants. Most people in the hood call her Miss Pac-Man mm. on the live chat. That's who that is. That's what she does, okay? I don't have nothing against, against Frost. It's all love. But that's something you never knew. The behind the scenes, this person was trying to destroy you, okay? And I didn't let it happen here on this platform. I didn't. Because I got love for you. I never disrespected you. If you don't want to come here, it's all good. I ain't even tripping on that. So, but the way other podcasters make it seem like you had something negative to say about me, so I had to hear it for myself and deliver it and tell you the truth. Other than that, Norbert, I don't know. I don't know. I, I find it very disrespectful because I found that you kind of rap. I was there in the beginning. I started it all. You did? Yes. Oh, okay. Now... <laughs> One last thing, okay, and, and it's a shame that I even have to bring this up, but I'm going to bring it up, okay? For anybody that wants my paperwork, all you have to do is DM me. I'm going to let you do it tomorrow, just one day. If you don't want the paperwork, then I'll send you the case number and the website where you can copy and paste the case number, put it in the website, and you can see everything. Mm. She keeps lying to everyone, saying yeah. that I haven't paid a bill. Mm. That's why they haven't released their paperwork. Who? Anybody that's done jail time knows that that's a damn lie. Yep. Public okay. Records. But she keeps lying to you guys. And I'm going to tell you guys, if she tried to do it to Frost, if she did it to me, she would do it to you. Hey. Okay. So other than that, I don't really have much to say other than, you know, that that person, this is what she does. So be careful if you talk to her over the phone because she records conversations. She keeps screenshots. She does everything and she'll manipulate even screenshots and even pictures. So, I'm just tired of bringing this up. I really didn't want to bring it up. But since this podcaster wanted to try to smut me up, mm. you know, I, I, I don't understand that this, these podcasters all want some type of dirt on me. But you contact me yourself and say, Tony, I, I at least want your paperwork. Send me the case number, you know, instead of just going around, you know, uh, um, well, that's not what I heard. Mm. Fuck what you heard. Yeah. You know, so oh, it's, anyways, it's, they, they like they say, they hate me because they ain't me. 
Whatever. No, bro, are you ready to drink some of this stuff? Yes. Uh, also, I just want to do... Uh, I wanted to ask Alex, Alex, how many likes do we have right now? Oh, you know what, Alex? Can you put the camera on here? Let me get us a beer real fast. <laughs> let's see. Let's see. We are currently at 132 likes. I can see right here that we have over 500 people on the live chat. Do me a solid. If you guys, if I made you laugh tonight, do me a favor. Hit that like button. As you can see, we're giving you guys a lot of good content. I like to think it's pretty funny. So do me a favor right now. Take the time while Tony gets the beer. To hit that like button for me. It'll help us out. It'll help this platform reach out more people so we can entertain you. Because at the end of the day, this is what we want to do. Entertain all of you and uh, appreciate all of you guys. Like, for instance, HCB Chemistry. He always likes to tap in and say nothing but positive stuff here on, on the live chat. And everybody in the live chat, everybody that participates, all of you guys always take the time to type some shit. Even if you might be talking shit or you're roasting somebody or you're just, you know, giving us our props. And all of you guys are important to us because... Like Tony says, without you guys, we wouldn't be anything. So out of all those 500, over 500 people, oh, all those 500 people, do me a favor, hit that like button and, uh, you know, help, con help us continue to grow this channel, this platform, because you guys are the ones that build us. All good. Uh, no, bro, you don't have anything to open this shit up because this shit is on tight. I got a fierro. Do you? Right here. Okay. Uh, never mind. I left that. Dumbass. <laughs> okay, hold on. Let me try to because this thing is. Now they have that little cutout part. Where it doesn't, just... bro. Really? No, it doesn't. So, anyways, so that's one thing. You know, I think it'll be interesting. Uh, uh, let's press up on her to post that picture at the back of her neck. Oh, there you go. What? Uh. Oh, okay. Yeah, so you, you don't think that should be a good post, Norbert? Oh, yeah, yeah, that would definitely be a good post. I mean, I, eventually everything comes out into the lighting, which yes, is, exactly. you know, which is a good thing. There's, there's only so much line you can do. Uh, and, you know, I'm going to be honest. I, I wasn't there in the beginning. I, I didn't create Chicano rap. I, but your brother I was. I <laughs> Hey, smell that, bro? It smells pretty good. Let's see. <clears throat> no, no, the, the, in, the, the bottle. I guess I smell this the top this sounds, it does smell fucking tropical capital tropical okay i can taste it i can taste it we're gonna take calls bro it's airy it's airy okay oh well i still have that one okay alice can you read us the the the, the question how long has it been up there <sighs> okay the Ooh. question Question's been up That's for 36 good. minutes. We have 258 votes. Okay. The question is, would you bone a relative? <laughs> and um, hey. uh, 26% said, hell yeah. And 74% said, hell no. Nah. Okay. So some people said, hell yeah. Yeah. Wow. See, you guys... That's just their honesty. It doesn't mean we agree with them. We're just giving you the opportunity to answer. 26%. 26% said they'll bond their cousin? Yeah. But well, that's that's a lot of cousins. That's wild right there. Out of how many votes? <clears throat> Jesus. Christ, that's wait, 26%, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, that means that's... Holy what, shnikes. That's 52 people that voted that say they would fuck their cousin. Uh, let's, uh, connect wow. me to the broadcaster, please. Hey, okay. wow. Jeez. <clears throat> All right, here we go. Okay, go ahead and put up the number now. Let's go ahead and get started. Oh. Is it strong? It, it's strong in flavor. Okay, so would, would you say like women would like it? Because women like fruity drinks. Oh, yeah, this is definitely the drink you would have at a swingers party. At a swingers party? How would you know? <laughs> Let's put the headphones on. Go ahead, so you don't have to hear me no more, huh? Okay, now let me ask you this. You took a swig. Would you recommend it? For women, maybe? Uh... For a party, yeah. Okay, For a party, see. meaning that, you know, everyone's going to drink, definitely. Oh, yeah, it is strong. That motherfucker is strong. Flavor-wise. It tastes syrupy, in, in my opinion. It, they definitely hold up to their style of Stella yeah. Rosa because a lot of stuff, the, the, their, their uh, rosé, their, yeah. 
They're uh, what's that other one called? Stella Rosa Brandy. So check it out. I don't know. They, they've been known to have very sweet drinks. That's why yeah. a lot of women like their drinks because it's, it's sweet. Right. Okay, everybody, we're opening up the damn phone line, so let's go. Hey, look, you didn't even put the damn number up, bro. <laughs> what the hell? See, the, dude, this guy has been lagging today. <laughs> You're like, I want the drink, folks. You know what it is? It's La Mota. Mm-mm. La Mota. I'm telling you. Is that her name? La Mota. Hey. Right there. Mary Jane. I'm over here waiting. Did you Dennis. know Eddie Murphy had a fucking song? Yeah, Party All the Time. Party All the Time. It was time, a big-time gay time. song, bro. Big-time gay song. What? Yes. Like, you, like, elaborate, please. Well, like, there's just some songs that are just big around gays, like YMCA. Oh, okay. Like, remember that song, Everybody Wang Chung Tonight? That was another one. <laughs> another one, Relax, Don't Do It. Another big oh, time. Oh, shit, that makes sense. Actually, that song yes. makes sense. The, yeah, oh, so fuck. you're gonna have to kind of relax on that one, too. Oh, shit. okay, let's go to the, see. Call her, come on, call back, bro. <sighs> call back, call her. Fuck, I didn't know that. That Go food, back, Carlos. I put Rick James helped produce that, right? Yeah, he did, and he actually sang with them a little bit. Okay, yeah. here we go. Here we go. Caller, your name, or where are you calling from? Jay, South Texas. Jay from South Texas. I don't believe that. that there, there's something missing in yeah, the back. Yeah, that, that doesn't sound like it. But anyway, go ahead, Jay. Go ahead, Jay. So, so, so Tony, you're saying that you run the, run the state with me. Um, what time and when? This is not you, bro. Stop. <laughs> that's, a good, so. that's a pretty good impression, though. It is pretty good. Business. That's pretty good, bro. Business. Anyways, bro, how you doing? So, you, you, so, what's so, your so. question, bro? My question is that Tony, my name, you call me on my name, homie, oh. on Norby's podcast. Hey. So, so you're saying that that that. that you're the king of Chicano rap. Well, nobody ever what, said what that, bro. <laughs> nobody ever said that, bro. So stop that. <laughs> you got to have some type of receipts, bro, if you're going to approach me with something like that, that I'm the king of Chicano rap. I don't consider myself Chicano rap, bro. I, I never liked somebody actually that said that. Why would anybody say king? Why yeah. would you want to be the king of, of Yeah. <laughs> so anyways, bro, is that it? So this is ri- risky business. You know, I got a business, right? I, I, I lend out my, my crack pipe. To, to all the- Anyways, uh, <laughs> let's let's go to the next one. Okay, callers, let's keep uh, it pushing because it, let's at least ask something pertaining to the show. Ask Norby's. Yeah. Now, you know what? This is actually pretty good. Huh? It is. Call in there. Here we go. Munchin. Caller, your name and where are you calling from? <laughs> yeah, man, this is Tony Montana, bro. <laughs> What's good, Tony? We're getting all of them today. What's good, That's my right, bro? Man. That's right. What up, Norby's? What up, Tony? What up, man? Hey man, check this out. How come every time I I, I, I turn on my YouTube, you guys are fighting with somebody? <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's everybody against us. <laughs> and you know what's funny that we don't even talk about it. Yeah, and you know what? Oh no! But let me say this to the caller. <laughs> I want to say this to this caller respectfully. It, it never started like that, bro. Until other podcasters started podcasting. Mm. It never started like that. You know, I have way way over two hundred. 300 shows where we never addressed anybody, bro. You know, it's crazy. You shine light on quite a few of these podcasters. It, and the thing is, instead of uplifting and blessing and kicking knowledge and wisdom to our people, we, we just, we run a shit show, bro, and talk bad about people. And people tune in and they become popular for it. And if they're winning, go for it. I just don't think it's no. beneficial for our people. That's all no, I'm saying. that's not. So... That's right, bro. That's right. You know what I mean? Water under the bridge, bro. Mm. You know what I mean? Absolutely. It is what it is. Absolutely. Hey, yes. Tony, take a shot. Norby, take a shot and take a rip. Hey. And you guys have a good night. You too, man. You too, Appreciate my you. Peace. Okay, let's go. Water under the bridge. That's good. I like that. It reminds me of the Red Hot Chili or Pepper song. Pissing the pep- piss in the river. Yeah, that, that, that doesn't remind me. No. <laughs> Call her your name or where are you calling from? YG from the Valle. YG from the what? From the Valle. Oh, what? from the Valle. From the Valle. What's good, my brother? Hey, How hey, you doing? Hey, Tony. Yes. Pretty good, bro. Hey, where's all the tough guys at that, that were calling Norby talking about you? Well, oh, where, where are they at? They don't, they, don't call in, they don't call in on your show. You know, <laughs> and, and the thing is, bro, I made up a phrase called, you know, if you got the balls, make the calls, and then everybody started running with it. But I really truly meant it. If you, you have anything to say, and it doesn't necessarily have to be beef, 
But maybe you want to get something off your shoulder. Yeah. You know, then just call. But when I called into Norbert's episode, I said, why doesn't nobody call me? I know, right? Yeah. Why do they call me? I'm like, I'm not Tony. <laughs> hey, hey, I'm I'm I might have to agree with you on that one because ain't nobody calling you, bro. Mm. Everybody called uh, Norby's, but nobody calls you. Yep. No, no, caller, if you don't mind me asking, why do you why do you think they do that? Honestly, bro, just to keep it one hundred with you, I, I, I think they're scared. Mm. I don't. I think that they don't want you to call them out for that for that one on one, and they don't. That's just the bottom line, bro. They they don't want to be put in that situation uh. and get cornered. There's no other reason why they would yeah. call Norby's and talk shit to Norby's when if they call you, you know, you're going to tell them, hey, what's up with that one-on-one? It's really full of my head. So they're not going to. Yeah, you know, and the, and the thing is, caller. want to sound like a bitch on the phone. Exactly. Yeah. That's the part right there. And, and the thing, caller, I'm going to say this, bro, and I truly mean this from the bottom of my heart. I don't want to have to catch the fade with anybody. It shouldn't have to be like that. It shouldn't. It shouldn't have to be like that, bro. And I don't want nobody to think that, like, you know, that this is a show where we just call motherfuckers out. No, it's not. But when you disrespect a man, I have to step to you like a man. Yeah. You know, and, and that's just me. No, it's I, I agree. I agree with you 100% on that. It's, it's just entertaining to keep it real. But then when it gets to that disrespect level, like, hey, on a man to man shit, like, you really feel a certain way towards me. Like, we can get him up, shake hands, or just walk our own way, and that's it. But definitely. It just. Yeah. yeah, and you know what? Yeah, I'm yeah. glad he said that because I want to give a shout out to Chicano too because he recently had a boxing match between two podcasters, I believe, yes. and they they set it out in the in on the ring. Much respect to them. Absolutely, absolutely. Thank you, caller. I appreciate you, man. But all right, all right, bro. Thank you. you. Guys, have a good night. You too, man. Peace. It was a good fight. Okay, I don't know if I'm gonna buy this again, Norbert, because it is kind of real sweet. It's pretty sweet. It's but like I said, Stella Rosa has been known. That's right. why, I mean, you could put it at a party, girl, and get drunk. Yes. Call her your name, and where are you calling from? Yo, is this the one and only? Uh, yes. Oh, shit. Like There's an echo in the room. You sound like the wizard. The one and only Tony Tranza? Yes, this is me. <laughs> ah, that's why he has the echo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Still waiting on the documentary, man. It's been like six, seven years and shit. Six, seven years? What the fuck? You sound super gay, bro. Just come out the closet already. Wait, bro. say that again? Later. Ah, like he ran away. Like was that was later or Raiders? Raiders. I think it was Raiders. No. But you know what, Brooke Caller? I appreciate you at least calling in. Yeah, he had the balls yeah, to yeah. call in, say a quick message, and then run away. Yes, call her your name, and where are you calling from? Oh, what's up, man? From Visalia. What's up, my, what's up, my brother from Visalia? Hey. Oh, man. We watched that interview, the one with Kid Frost, man, and mm. it's kind of embarrassing, dude, because mm. if, if you didn't watch it, it no. sounds like he's getting pushed to talk smack, man. Mm. You, you think so? No, yeah. You can see it. You can see it on there. He's getting pushed, man. And, yeah. and I would never thought that he would. He's so talking so much about peace and, and unity between Raza. And then to come out over there and start talking smack about you and other heads on there just don't make no no sense. That doesn't make sense. No. Yeah, you know what? And and I've had nothing but love for that dude, bro. So I that's why I didn't get where that came from because every time I've seen him, it's been all love, bro. That's crazy though, because it's like saying, you know what? I fucking I fucking love Rodi and Radio. I love Tony Vision, but you know, fuck them. I I, I don't no, know. And then he's <laughs> over the there fuck? talking. He, he's are talking about dope house. The same thing about the old house, too. He's like, oh, I got these. You know, I'm not an OSPM. I don't never really like music or anything. But how he starts talking about, oh, I'm good friends with Juan Gotti and all these people. And then suddenly comes out, well, fuck the old house when he just made a CD with Baby Bash. Damn. So it's just like, <laughs> it sounds like he's just getting, to me, that's what it looks like. You need to watch it, man, on that one. Yeah. You know what I mean? Now, you know, if that's the case, uh, I don't know the situation, but just give my opinion. It's not a good position to be in, man. Especially coming back out, especially since you've never done any podcasts, at least around with, within the last two years. And to come out in that fashion is just not a good look. Well, I mean, let me add that to, to, to that, Tony. This, this is what I tell artists. You know, if you're going to go to a podcast, go to somebody that's in the music industry, knows about music, because you're going to talk about music. If you go to somebody that isn't about that, that isn't part of that, they're going to ask you random questions and they might just set you up to make you look bad. That like, is very true. Some people, that's, that's why it makes sense when you say, you know, 
people that are in the music industry shouldn't interview music. I think you were you were protecting the artist more than you were protecting That's what the, I was doing. Because if not, they're going to corner you in on, well, what do you think about this guy? Do you like this guy? This guy said this. And the caller doesn't even know if that's even true. And you know what? Just because you shot music videos doesn't mean you fucking know about music either. So, <laughs> anyways, caller, I, I appreciate no, but you. If you. If you watch it on there, it's, it's, he, he's on there because, you know, the, of the remark he made on that concert from years ago. Yeah. So he got put in the corner. So he had a, you could tell he had to agree with anything he said. That's what it looked like. Like he had to agree and talk smack too. So he's like, okay, you know, let's go to this question. So yeah. F, you know, F, yeah, or F, you know, these guys. And he's just like, yeah, yeah. Like you could tell on this. That's but, crazy. You know what I mean, you keep yeah. your head up, bro. And these haters are just hating, bro. You Definitely. Mean, you keep doing what you're doing, man. Thank you, my bro. Thank you, man. Appreciate you. Appreciate Thank that. You. that. You know what? You could always tell the weak man when they start making excuses for something that happened with him. Look, if I said something and I meant it at that time, I might as just say, look, at that time, bro, I meant that shit. Yeah. Now I see things for what they truly are and I fucked up. At least be honest, you know? Yeah. Shit, let's go. Call her your name and where are you calling from? <clears throat> Hello. Hey, uh, this is Daniel from... Santa Maria. So Daniel? Daniel from Santa Maria, how you doing? Good, man. How are you doing? I'm doing good, my bro. Thank doing you for calling in and being a part of the show. We're doing fabulous. Yeah, yeah, for sure, man. Uh, yeah, man. Uh, I was gonna say. Uh, so I was watching the uh, the arm wrestling uh, competition, <laughs> and, uh, I, and so like there, there's a video of you. I don't, you know, I, I try not to look at too many of your videos because you always have your you know, muscles out and stuff, and you know, I'm not trying to look at too many males too long, but uh, there, there's a specific video where uh, you're doing like ten pull-ups, and you do them like if it's nothing. Yes. And uh, I wanted to ask, uh, like, how how long did it take to get to that point? Because oh. I can't even do one still. Uh, how old are you, if you don't mind me asking? Uh, forty-four. Okay, forty-four. When I first started doing my pull-ups. I was around maybe 48 years old, and I'm going to tell you what happened. At least for me, this is, this is the answer, for, like, for me. Yeah. I started working out, bro, and I didn't know what I was doing. Yeah. Okay? All my older brothers have all worked out, have all been power lifters. Okay? Yeah. Not me. I've always been a tall, skinny yeah. Mexican kid. When I started working out, I want to say maybe 2016, somewhere around there, um, I was, you know, people used to always tell me, you got to get, you got to take protein. You got to take protein. I was a guinea pig. I was buying chocolate flavor protein, Oreo flavor protein. None of that shit was working, but it tasted good. Yeah. So finally, I bumped into yeah. my boy, Yellow Ice, my boy, Keith, my trainer. Um, this guy used to bodyguard, bodyguard for DJ Quick back in the early 90s for all of us. This guy's deadly with his hands, and he's huge. Wow. He's in his 60s and still huge. Jeez. Okay. So he tells me, you don't yeah. know what you're doing. So I said, okay. Make a long story short, he said, you got to get food for your muscles. Mm. And that's the way he put it. And I go, food? And he said, yeah, protein. He goes, I got the right protein. So he introduced me to a protein called whey isolate protein. Yeah. And he goes, no additives, no preservative. Okay. It tastes ugly. Yeah. He said, as a matter of fact, it tastes like watered down milk. Mm. But two scoops, each scoop is uh, two ounces, so four ounces. Yeah. And um, drink it after every workout. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to tell you this. I've never been able to do pull-ups before that protein, bro. After that, I, I just felt it, bro. And I just yeah. like, oh, shit, I can do it. And then I, now I, I love doing it, bro. I, yeah. love, I love doing it. That's actually my stretch before I start working on back. Mm. Yeah. So That's good. That's a good one. I mean, if you wow. really want to try, find a bar, get a bench, and then just, you know, work to it. Yeah. Work towards it. What was your next question, on? bro? Oh, um, yeah, well, uh, what, what do you think about just going, like, eating steak and chicken? And oh, carnivore kind of diet. Stuff? Okay, with me, I will say this, oh. that um, I try not to eat too much steak. I like it because it's, it takes longer yeah. for your body to digest. Shit's expensive. Yeah, so I stick to a lot of more fish and chicken. That, that's, what I, that's what I stick yeah. to. You know, so, but a steak is good. Wow. It's just that... It just takes longer for your body to digest. Like me, I needed to lose unhealthy weight and build muscle. Mm. And that's where I'm at. Yeah. Now, there's, there's only so far your body's going to peak. 
And then that's when people start taking steroids. I'm not going to do that, bro. I'm about to be 56 this month, okay? And I can still knock out pull-ups. Yeah. I challenge people to push-ups, wow. uh, pull-ups, and even arm wrestling. Yeah. You know, like like Goto's, uh, he... He uh, challenged me. Yeah. You were here. Yeah, yeah. I, know, I'm the one that filmed him. That's yeah. the video that. Yeah, he said, he said, come on, man, let's go. And I, I didn't think he was serious. You know, I think because he beat wow. American Cholo. Yeah. He beat him. And then he beat uh, uh, Little Grifo. Yeah. So I guess he figured, you know, let me get tone. He, 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 was, in a, he was in the street. He's feeling, he's feeling a certain way. Yeah, so. He like a take, Tony. Yeah, I was like, yeah. not tonight. Yeah. What, what about uh, what about Norby's? Um, I was wearing uh, Norby's. You said uh, you get a weight a weight bench and a bar. Uh, have you ever held a bar in your right hand? A bar? <laughs> He's clowning yeah. you. I mean the the <laughs> well, how much does the, the bar usually weigh? Un fierro weigh. How much? Does, well, I I know, but how much does the bar weigh? It all depends. No, no, a, re- a regular Olympic bar. How much does it weigh? Oh, well, a bench bar is forty five pounds. Uh, forty five pounds. Forty five. Yeah, it's forty five pounds. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah. anyways, yeah. color that I, used to be the, the yeah, beginning workout when I was powerlifting. Yeah. Anyways, uh we need receipts. Anyways, thank you, caller. Appreciate you, man. I have them. Yeah, for I sure, man. Have. All right. Have peace. a good night. You peace. too, man. No, bro, we gotta see pictures. Yeah. I mean shit. I wish somebody recorded me. You got a polar oh, see. Uh hold on. I'll tell you how much my max deadlift right now. Come on. I'll tell you my max deadlift. Yeah, he's gonna go ahead and accumulate how much he weighs and how much he ate today. And add it up, and that's it. Okay, here we go. Call her your name, and where are you calling from? Welcome. Yeah, this is Joey calling from Phoenix. Joey, how are you tonight? What's up, Joey? Thank you for calling in. Doing good. Uh, I had a couple questions for you, Tony. Uh, I'm a big uh, Bone Thugs and Harmony fan. Yes. I've been rocking with them since they came out, like in 93, 94. Yes. Uh, I know that that's your era. I was just wondering... If you ever ran into any of the Bone members or if you ever did any work with Bone Thugs and Harmony? No, I did not. But I will give you a story, and I'm drawing a blank to my friend's name that produced their first album. Um, I'm trying to remember his name. Most of you guys know him, but he's the one that produced Rugged Stuggish Bone. Oh. Here's the crazy part of that, and I'm going to give you guys a, a gem here. I used to be at a studio in the city of Alhambra and, uh, here in California, okay? And uh, my manager, Steve Yano, owned it. Oh. God, I'm trying to remember his name, but he would come and he would always play my manager beats. And it's so crazy that these beats sounded like slow songs. Really? Okay, yeah, they sounded like slow songs. Yeah. So nobody was able to rap to them. So he kept the cassette around because that's how old it was with, with a cassette. Easy E comes one day, okay? And he talks to Steve, I'm looking for beats. You know, um, I got this group, well, I think, from Cleveland, Ohio, if I'm correct. And, you know, I'm trying to get them on. Steve said this, my manager. Well, I got this cassette, Beats, blah, blah, blah. The rest is history. That was one of the songs, one of the many songs that he produced on the album. The first one was Rugged Stuggish Bone. And uh, they recorded it, our audio achievements here in the city of Old Torrance, and it isn't too far from my house. Uh, that's the same studio where Above the Law, J.J. Fad. The DOC, NWA, Easy E, all in the same gang, um, High C. That's where we recorded all of our shit, mm. and they were there, they were there afterwards, yeah. and they recorded some of their classic stuff, and then eventually they recorded a lot of the stuff uh, with Tony G, yeah. an, another legend. Yeah. So yeah, but I never got a chance to meet with them. Now I've done shows with them. Yeah. But I never actually. Hello, how you doing? Blah yeah. blah blah. Yeah. So, was it DJ Unique? You, DJ Unique. There you go. Yeah. DJ unique. Yeah, you, I was gonna say unique. Yeah. Yeah. So we follow each other on Facebook, but that's, I don't know his Instagram. Mm. That's a good shit. Uh, Hell yeah. And I was gonna ask you if, if you had to pick a a song from Bone, which would be your favorite Ooh. Bone song? It would be Rugged Stuggish Bone, or the one they did with Biggie. Really? Yes, bro. Because I'm gonna tell you something. I, I, I'm trying to remember the, the, the concert, and I'm trying to remember the year. I think it was 1997. You guys can YouTube this. DJ Quick, Sugar Free, Second to None, AMG, High C, and we were all there, Irvine Meadows. Yeah. That was when uh, the barge came out and sang that song, I Like, I, I Like, you know, that I Big Like butts. the Way You Comb Your oh, Hair. Oh. They sang it on stage, and then Bone Thugs closed the show. That's okay. Cool. 
I saw them perform that Biggie song. Biggie had just passed away, so whatever year that was, maybe it was 96. Yeah. And it was a very emotional time, and Biggie had just passed, and they sang that song first with Biggie. Uh, um, they, they let Biggie's verse play, bro. Oh, fuck. Yeah, and then they did Ruggie Stuggie's Bone. So those two, because I seen them perform that song at that time, yeah. it meant a lot to me, so those are my favorite, bro. Nice. Oh, what about yours? Uh, I don't know the title of the song, but it was the one, I don't know how it goes. It just goes, fuck, I can't even do the beat. Okay, caller, what was yours? Mine, uh, that's a tough one. I probably have to go with uh, first of the month, or I like uh, if I could teach the world as well. I think that's it. I think that's the one, if I could teach the world. That's my favorite also. Wow. Yeah. That's a good one. Yeah. All All right, caller. Thank you, man. Definitely. Oh, I appreciate it, man. Thank you. Thank you. Bro, we're, we're, getting, we're putting some fucking West Coast history tonight. Oh, but then again, I wasn't there. Mm. Okay, here we go. <laughs> Call her your name or where are you calling from? <laughs> Hello, yo, caller. yo. Yes. Yo. Kid Frost. You know who it is, man. Kid Frost, how you doing, my bro? Hey, never in your world would you think I would call in like this because I don't really do this, but. Man, you got to stop lying, Tony. Man, you got to stop lying on your dick, dog. Come on, man. Okay, what did I lie about? Because I ain't never, I ain't never been in this circle, but what you saying is false. So okay, what about did I lie about? The wig, man, don't get me tied in some shit you been in, brother. What did all, I lie man. about, Frost? Let's set, the, let's set the record straight, homie. What, what did, did I, I lie to about, Frost? Your thing and tell you to stop a podcast, dog. That ain't never happened. And we can get mellow on that, bro. Come what on, did man. I lie, lying, Frost? Bro. What did I lie about, bro? I'm asking you one question. You're saying that I told you to bring, that I told you to kick out somebody in your little set or. Oh, no, you did. Kid, dog. I, ain't, I ain't never been involved in that shit. No, you you're want me, talking, do you want me to case, repeat that again? A case and me in a case. Do you Come want on, me to man. repeat that again? Really? Do you want me to repeat that again, really? what I said? Because I, I don't think you caught that, bro. I, I'm not, I'm just catching, I'm just catching shit, but man, you lying, Tony. This do you want me to repeat what I said? Do you re- do you want me to repeat you what need I said? Me to repeat what I said. Okay, well, yeah. Tell me after you repeat it, I'll repeat what I said. Go ahead. All right, I said when they asked me, Tony, are you part of? Are you going to go on Rotary Radio? Or are you going to be on, on on that or whatever part of the Chicano rap documentary? No, I said no. I, I and I said and I said my reasons why, but it never. But man, you wanna you wanna try to turn this around into some lies and false shit and some other innuendo to turn this around from the fact of what this is, of our contribution to the cultura of Chicano rap. That's that was my that this is my only dilemma of it all. For a good fifteen years or ten years when you could have really, really did a stronghold and had a real strong contribution with you putting up tracks for a lot of Chicano rappers that were in that time in the trenches really trying to do something for the culture and bring it forward, you weren't there. And that's the only thing that I said, Tony, about the whole thing. Anything else, dog, or anything else that you want to say or or of a man's character or his manhood and all that shit, man, that's cheese, man. She smells that shit that you're known for and the reason why I don't fuck with you. You want to know why I don't fuck with you? Because Please before tell me. you even, even got on to even do this shit, my brother, you should have went and took even a junior college, JC junior, junior uh, journalism class, man, and learn this shit a little bit before you came at it, bro. And I Okay, now can I say what I want to say? Now, could I say what I want to say? Go ahead, Tony. Okay. So you, I, you hey, hold on. I, I got to finish. Am I raising any points, though? No, because you're, you're, you're all over the place, Frost. I the mic. Frost, you're all over the place. So now here's my turn. Okay. And this is going to be good because a lot of people can do reactions out of this. So this is going to be good. So here's my thing. You just said one thing. I never called you to is tell that, you. Hey, wait, wait. Uh, bro, I'm trying to finish. I didn't I interrupt mean, you, bro. You don't want to have I a conversation I didn't you. interrupt you. you. Want is a I didn't. Reaction. Bro, just like I didn't now. interrupt you. So uh, let me finish. I didn't interrupt you, bro. Okay. So here's my thing. You called me when Sandy Pants, your ex-girlfriend, was here. 
and you told me, get she that fat bitch out of here. Okay. I knew the chick for three weeks. Oh, she, she says came two months. To the hospital, like some some stand when I was finished recovering out of an open heart surgery. Do you think after my open heart surgery that I was someone going around dirty dicking and sticking my dick in someone? Falso. It's a lie, bro, and it never happened. Then she lied then. But you did call me. But you did call me and tell me to get her the fuck out of here. So I did, and then that's when she started with all that bullshit. That's it. I'm going to fucking lie about it. What am I going to get about lying about one phone call? What am I going to get out of that, bro? My brother, let's go back. My brother, that is wrong again because you're saying it from that date. After that fact, my brother, you recorded at least 30, 40 episodes with that chick in your camp. What are you saying? I never said 30, 40 episodes. I could give you dates on how long she was here. She was here about six or seven times, bro. It almost makes me like, it sounds like you're mad that she was here. Okay. So what am I lying about? Once again, what am I lying about? All I said. You're lying and saying she was my girlfriend. Well, that's what she said. That's one. Does she have a tattoo? Exactly. Does she have a exactly. tattoo in the back of her neck about what, you? What is it? What does she hey, have? What is a what is a what is a <laughs> hey, what is a pig in a wig game to go out there and use my name and say, man, come on, she gains everything to use that after. You guys ask me and after the fact, dog, that that a chick like that is not even in anything of my nomenclature. She came around, she would take these huggy lovey dubby pictures, but that was it, dog. That was it. And, and that's it. Then. That, so you want your reaction video then that's it, from bro. your fans and then your that's it. from that? That's oh, all it is, bro. One, guys. Here's your reaction, That's guys. all it is, then. Here's your reaction. Then she was never your girlfriend, and that's it. I but I'm just telling you, I'm just telling you, that's what, what she doing, was, bro. That's what she said. In your mouth, dog. So that's what she any, said, bro. Hey, dog, I'm just any, telling you what she said. Any, Why are you mad? I'm just I telling you mad, what she dog. said. I ain't mad, but you... But you but keep yelling, bro. You, you keep yelling. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to talk stern. to you, bro. I'm going to be stern. We're, we're not I'm gonna children, be strong, bro. We're men. And I'm going to let you know that I don't stand on bullshit. That's why, Tony. You wanted your big reaction. You said it right there. All you, this is all what you're all in it for. Tony. I said podcasters are going to react to this. get back on the boards and start producing some bomb-ass music. Instead of being a chismosa, dog, that's all you do is cheese man. Chismosa. And if the right ones don't do it and the right ones go along with your flow, I seen you, dude. You play favorites to the one that are cool with you. As soon as they ain't cool with you or they rub you the wrong way or they say the wrong shit, you want your reaction video, dog. Well, guess what? I got a reaction video. Eat a dick with a bowl of fucking shit, man. And then you're going to hang up, right? Get your and reaction then, video. And then you're going to hang up, right? And then you're going to hang nah, up, right? hell no. Nah. I'm right here. Oh, okay. Why hang up? You can't win, dog. You, first of all. Okay, no. First Tony, of all, let me tell you something, Frost. Here's, why I, here's why I need to show you up. Check this out, bro. Here's why I need to show you up, bro. Okay, here's why I need to show you up. No, first of all. No, you're not going to ask me Tony, shit, bro. Let me ask you, let me no, you you're up. not going to ask me shit. I you gave you an opportunity. You don't let me talk. So I'm going to tell you right now, bro. You talk all that shit over the motherfucking phone, but knowing goddamn well, you wouldn't say it to my motherfucking face. Okay, so just shut the fuck up. I showed you nothing but love, bro. I showed you nothing but love. Okay, and that's it. You, and I'm going to stop that. Tony, stop that, bro. You, you know what? I'm Come nobody. On, I'm just a man. Tony, I'm just a where? man that is where, not afraid Tony, of you, where? bro. So stop. Okay? Nope. So stop. Nobody's saying that. Okay? Exactly. So just stop, bro. You you're calling over here with your feelings hurt. Okay? Face. You're what, all hurt, bro. Tony, that's gonna, it. Gonna, that's you're, it. You're just hurt, bro. You weren't saying that when you were here. You weren't saying that when you were here. Okay? You weren't. You You're paid me. Funny, you dog. showed me nothing You're for love, funny. and I showed as you nothing for love. Okay, I didn't talk shit mean, about you. Okay, but all you're trying to do you is denounce your, your homegirl Sandy I Pants, and that's it, really it, bro. Was that you were gonna plagiarize our raza and our gente when you could have been there in the forefront with us, and still you won't address that because you never will. Here's what so I'm gonna do right here. I'm gonna do something for the raza right now. That was for the raza. Okay, let's go. <laughs> We're not going to get nothing by going back and forth like that, bro. I know. Okay? That I, I had a call like that on my show. Like, bro, you, if you're not going to fucking listen my part, why are we even... Are, I'm not trying to argue. I screenshot his number, bro. So if you want to talk to me, you can talk to me like a man in person, bro. I'm not just not going to yell at you, bro. And look, and, and I'm going to say this right now. 
even after I hung up, I'm not going to smut the man's name. No, no. I'm not. I'm going to leave no. it at that, bro. Okay? That's my thing that, uh, um, because I'm not that kind of man. Hey, I wanted yeah. to talk to you, bro. You know what? We're, we're not children. We're men. Okay? So if you cannot call me and at least show me my respect, I'm not going to... I'm not going to do the same thing for you, bro. Okay. Yeah. I try to give you your respect. I showed you love. I put out a fucking video. Pretty much. Paying homage to you, bro. Yep. You know, then you want to say she was not my chick. She was not my, I'm just telling you what she told me. Yes. That's it. I'm just telling you what she told me. And that's it. That's it. Okay. You want to get mad because I said that like, bro, you didn't talk to the other podcaster that way, mm. but you think you could talk to me that way, bro. Again, I'm not going to smudge Smash's name up or talk bad about him. I'll leave it at that. Yeah. When we see each other, then we can talk like grown men, and that's the way we handle it. There you go. So, anyways. Yeah. Norbert, last thoughts. I give him credit. He had the balls to call. You know what? He had the old balls to make the calls. Hey. So, once again. <laughs> so, honestly, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say this. Thank you, Frost, for calling in, bro. I screenshotted your number. I will call you. And we will set it up where we can meet up alone. And if you want to talk, we can talk. If you want to do anything else, I'm fine with that. Okay? But this is not a place where I'm going to sit here and lie to you, bro. Yeah. Okay? I'm not going to sit here and lie. You called me. You know, if I showed receipts, I better have receipts for what I said. And I did. Mm. Okay? So that's all I'm saying, bro. You're just mad because I brought something out and I backed you up when this girl wanted to smut your name up. And I didn't do that. I wouldn't allow that, bro. I'm not going to allow that uh, for that to happen to you. Yeah. You did a lot uh, uh, with your music. And for me to allow somebody to come to your podcast, to my podcast and smut your name up. If I was a cheese muscle, yeah. like he said, yeah. and I wanted to cheese me in the cloud, I would have allowed that, bro. Yeah. But I didn't. So, Norbert, go ahead. Uh, you know what? I just want to say, you know what? <sighs> Frost, you are a legend. And I'm not going to say, I'm never going to say you're a senile old man like other podcasters have said and unfortunately you chose the wrong podcast to go to because you're only angry because you went to a podcaster that only wanted to do one thing and that's make tony look bad you fell for his trap there you have nobody to blame but yourself none of this would have happened had you not gone to a certain podcaster got suckered into saying something that you didn't mean. And now you're and now you're in this situation where you gotta explain yourself because a podcaster that doesn't give a fuck about people only exploits them, exploited you. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, you're a legend, Frost, but you, you unfortunately did this to yourself by going to somebody that only exploits people just so they could win. Like Tony said, he gave you your flowers. He made a video of you. He has no animosity towards you. He only went by facts that were given to him. And at the end of the day, he didn't say all these things to protect you, but you're mad. And you put him in a situation where he has to explain these things because you chose a cocksucker that doesn't give a fuck about anybody that laughs at all these Chicano artists because all he does is fucking talk shit about them. And I don't know why these guys still suck his dick. Alex, <laughs> you put up the last uh, it's DM funny, that Frost sent me? It's funny when I see all these Chicano rap artists still, still fucking hope to be like on that. this motherfucker's platform. Yeah. When all he is doing is, is using you, exploiting you, and then laughing behind your back because you're so stupid enough to go on his platform and make an idiot of yourself. That's all I got to say. Okay, look at one last thing, you guys. I just want to bring one last thing up, and it's this. Uh, let me see. Um, Alex has it on the screen, and I just want to share this with you because this is the last time that me and Frost actually um, spoke and um, I can't seem to find it on my list, but can you go ahead and, and read it to us, Alex? This was, uh, first of all, read off his followers because he had gotten his main page deleted, started the new one, and he found me on Instagram, and this is what he wrote me. Okay, it, has, it says that um, the real Kid Frost and yeah. 6.7 thousand followers. Yeah, it's when he started his new page. Uh, he said, I got no qualms, no beef with you, period. And that's what he did, and what did I write? The feeling is mutual, 100. And that's what I did. I have, even now, today, I have no beef with that guy. So I don't know where all this came from. So, but that's his page right there. And uh, 
Frost, I keep receipts for everything, my bro. Okay? You call me brother, treat me like a brother, bro. And at least have receipts for where you say I'm lying. All I'm telling you is what she told me. That's it. Mm. Anyways, uh, go ahead and give shout outs. Shout outs to the live chat. Everybody that watched tonight, please do me the huge favor. Hit the like button because you have no idea how much that helps us. Share it. Talk to people about us. Like, this is news with Norby's. But Rhodium Radio shines lights on artists that you never heard of. People that you, you, you eventually love and eventually start performing in shows. Help us out by hitting that like button. That's that's more than you guys putting in the super chats. Aside from that, thank you to everybody that uh, always stands up for us, always that uh, supports us, always that uh, is involved with us. Thank you, all guys, because we 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 really just want to entertain people. This this is all we've been doing is entertain people. You do interviews on Rodeo and Radio to shine light on people. You do Dining with the Wizard to talk about restaurants and their food. You do fucking Drinking the Wizard to hang out with friends and talk. And you do News with Norris to talk about news, ghetto news, fucking stupid news, to entertain people. This is what we're doing here is entertaining. We are not trying to start fights. We are not trying to spread rumors. We are just trying to uplift our people, uplift the culture, I don't know why these cocksuckers want to keep attacking us and and want to smut not only Tony's name, but every single artist that has sat on this chair. They say only people that want to end their career come to this show. No, people that have made a difference in this culture have come to this show. People that are making a difference come to this show. So for people to say that people will come here to end their careers... Like, how much of a fucking piece of shit are you that you're going to say something like that knowing that your own friends come to this show to promote themselves? Oh, good. Let's go ahead and end it. Um, once again, uh, somebody left a funny-ass comment. He said, the last call is going to be the beginning of the Chicano Rap documentary. That was good. Okay, that was good. <laughs> and by the way, for those that have been asking, uh, Polliner is what I've been drinking. This is Heffen Weizen, which is German beer. Can you get us another one, Norbert? Yes, sir. Please. This is actually pretty damn good. Uh, I like it. It, it, has, it has a monk, okay? We have some super uh, yeah, hold on. Hold on one second. And so, you know, for people that, for, you know, for Frost to say, you know what, whenever you don't get along with someone, whenever you don't this, you smut them up. Um, I just want to ask you guys that are on the live chat or super chat or people that decided not to be on um, the live chat and just watching, please... Um, you know, send me where, where on my podcast I have somebody somebody's name up mm. because that's that's what you know. Frost said he said whenever you don't like or disagree with somebody, you know what I said. You don't. You start smutting them up. You start talking bad about them. Um, I, I ask respectfully to at least make a clip or at least sh give show me the video or the timestamp where I went ahead and smutted somebody up. I called out two people on this podcast. A long time ago, maybe two years ago, rest in peace, night out and royalty, and it stopped there. I addressed them one time, and that's all I'm going to say. So, we've been here from the very beginning, September 11, 2019, and all we've ever done was uh, was shine light and expose these artists that never really get exposure to our people. Mm. Okay, now you may have a song called La Raza. Yeah. Okay. And a lot of people accuse you of never putting on Rasa. Okay. Mm. A lot of people have their stories about Frost. Yeah. I don't have one. Yeah. I don't. You know, now I produce for Frost. Mm -hmm. And I was in the late 90s with Lawless Click, my homies from the West Side, right mm -hmm. in Wilmas. Yeah. You were there. We did a song. Yeah. Uh, actually, like two or three songs. Okay. And if not more, with Don Cisco, Slow Pain, Don Cisco. you know, uh, uh, JV. Uh, Nino Brown, I could name them. You were there, and you probably don't even remember. Mm. Okay, and if you don't remember Frost, I have pictures of those days. Yeah, I keep receipts for everything, bro. So please do not call me a liar when I have receipts and you have none. Mm. Okay, so and I say that respectfully, my bro. You call me brother, I'm gonna refer to you as that. So that's all I'm gonna say. Uh, so other than that, you know what, man? Uh, thank you for your contribution, and I want to thank you for calling in, bro. I just wish we could have talked 
differently. Yeah. Because we haven't talked or seen each other in a long time, bro. So, and, and I'll still say this, Norbert, that his song changed the game. His song that he did with Tony G. Tony G. La Raza, bro. Hey. Much love and respect, Tony G. Uh, let me give a shout out to Alex Cervantes, Cervantes Enterprise, News of Norby's, my son, Be Scandalous. Let me give a shout out to uh, Marvelous Inc., my co host. Let me give a shout out to um, Magic Girl, our moderator. And um, Hip Hop Jedi. The Hip Hop Jedi. Hey. The fool that uses the force inappropriately. <laughs> so now, um, other than that, um, I, I, I just, I just, no, I just need to say one last thing. Go okay? for it, man. Oh, wait, Alex, um, go ahead and say the super chats, and then I got a, oh, yeah, yeah. I got a prayer request, bro, which I never asked my followers, but yeah. I got a prayer request. Go ahead. Okay. Um, 90s limit one dropped $2. Um, he dropped, he said, hit the like. 90s limit one dropped another $2. He said, yeah. hit the like again. Um, EVW, no. EVWRZ89 dropped 199. He said South Central in the house. Hey. Hey. 90s Limit 1 dropped another $2. He said hit the like. Enrique Ledesma dropped 499. He said, Where's the hits? Homies, bitches, mm. and rats lie. Numbers don't. 100. Numbers don't lie. Hey. Only if they're fake. Anyways, right. go ahead. KTS dropped. Um, Oh, well, he's been a member for seven months. He said, uh, I don't I don't think I ever seen anyone give Frost love or his flowers the way you do mm. on that clip. Yeah. Uh, Carlos Cruz dropped 199. He said, rumor has it that she has Norby's face in her cheek. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you never know. Hey, but shout out to Krista Perez. Okay, uh, Enrique Ledesma <laughs> dropped 499. He said, um, take this as a lesson, children. Never let a falling star fall on you. Ooh, wow. Wow. Uh, That's good. BBVV dropped 499. He said, um, Tokes was always against lame ass Frost. Frost ain't about the Rasa F him. Rest in peace. And, and you know what? Let me start right there, bro. I could have brought that up about Toker. Rest in peace. Yes. Rest in but peace. I didn't. And he had his reasons. I spoke to his brother. And I spoke to people that were in, in part of the, you know, brown side. Yeah. I could have brought that up, but I didn't, bro. Because you know what? That would be disrespectful to somebody that I respect, bro. So, go ahead. Okay, Enrique Ledesma dropped 499. He said, ask yourselves, Raza, who is for the cultura? Rhodium Radio stays undefeated. Hey, hells yeah. And then uh, Dedrick Tatum dropped two dollars he said haters hit the dislike mm. hit the dislike unsubscribe subscribe again hey. it doesn't matter you guys still watch so but i i just want to thank everybody who watched honestly Wait, uh, tony before you give your prayer yeah. please uh, don't get sad on me no no i just want to make do one thing for sure one thing that i i, I don't know if we mentioned them but i definitely want to say thank you to all the members I appreciate you guys, that everyone that became a member, the subscribers also, of course, yes. but the members because they help us out extra. Uh, I wish we could buy more members, but uh, we, we, we can't. So I definitely appreciate all the ones that actually spent their money to become a member of this channel and support us. Thank yeah. you. Other than that, I'm just going to end it with this. Uh, I want you, for those of you that really care about this platform, I want to thank you for being a part of it. And please keep my brother Mario in prayer. That's all I'm going to say. So I'm going to end it with that. Please keep my brother Mario in prayer. Uh, my brother really, really needs it. Um, and that's all I'm going to say. I should not have went live today because of my brother. But I still did. And once again, I just want to say thank you for the kid Frost for calling in. Let's get out of here. This is Los Angeles. Breaking, breaking news. Gang, gang, gang capital of the nation. This, this is Los Angeles. Breaking, breaking, breaking news. This, this, this. this is Los Angeles. Breaking, breaking news. This
This is Los Angeles. Breaking, breaking, breaking news. Gang, gang, gang capital of the nation. This, this. What's that, brother? 